The story of Olympia. It's a story about a place known for many things. It's the village once promoted as the Pearl of the Puget Sound. It's the town that oysters and water made famous. It's the capital city of Washington State. But more than anything else, Olympia is a place that people made great. So join us, won't you, in our Stories of Old Olympia. It's a tribute to our town's quiet heroes, the workers and the dreamers, the pioneers and the builders. They're all part of our story. They're all home folk. And while they don't always make headlines, they do make cities, and our city's a better place because of them. Welcome. I'm Joe Willing, your host for the story of Olympia. In this chapter, we're going to talk with a true pioneer of politics, Olympia's first woman mayor, Amanda Smith. Amanda was born in Verdun, France in 1906, which, if you'll remember, was the site of the Great War in which she lost some of her family. She came over a year later and settled with her family in North Dakota until her father discovered the luxuries and the, the uh, good living in the Northwest, in Boston Harbor in particular, and moved the family here in 1922, where she's been happily in residence since. Welcome, Amanda. Thank you. Now, let's talk about your early life and uh, your memories back in North Dakota. Do you remember much about that? Oh, do I ever. They were happy days. Yeah. North Dakota, as you know, gets very, very cold and lots of snow and I love ice skating and skiing and all those mm -hmm. things. My folks, however, they remember banking the house to keep it warm mm -hmm. and struggling, you know. Mm -hmm. But I was very hurt when we moved out here. I didn't want to leave. I was young and, but I'm very, very happy and glad I came and I wouldn't go back to North Dakota for anything. <laughs> I still have friends there and we correspond. So you were a sweet 16 when you moved to Olympia? Uh, 17 almost. Seven, almost 17. Uh -huh. And you were going to high school then? Or? I graduated. I was very smart when I was young. <laughs> I graduated in three and a half years, so I had graduated before I came out here. So you were ready to go to work? Right. Well, I wanted to go to college, but my father had a massive coronary heart attack. Heart attack. Oh. So I went to uh, business school for a year and a half mm -hmm. and took uh, business administration, bookkeeping, shorthand. Was that so here forth, in Olympia? Here at Olympia. Really? Which, what was the name of it? Dietz. Dietz Business College. And that was downtown? Uh, yes, the building has been torn down. It was it was uh, ruined in the earthquake. Uh -huh. Well, they must have taught you taught you very well because you did pretty well with what they taught you in that shorter time. Well, I worked and I studied and uh -huh. I still study. I love books. Mm -hmm. What kind of business was your father in? Yeah, back in North Dakota, he had um, uh, men's, women's, and children's shoe store uh -huh. and harness shop. Uh -huh. And then when he came out here, you no know, horses. In, in Olympia, 22. and he uh, went into the auto top business, oh, okay. repairing and selling auto tops. Uh -huh. And he had a business in Olympia? In Olympia, on right where uh, the downtown 4th Street Safeway stands now. Okay. Was business good to your dad here? Uh, yes, very good. Yeah, and then he was here? Prospered. From Boston Harbor. Now, did he buy well, in Boston Harbor? We, 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 no, we didn't. Tell me the story about your dad coming out here. <laughs> Well, uh, as I say, Dad wasn't too well back in North Dakota. We thought he had asthma. Uh -huh. It turned out to be a heart problem. But um, one day, a salesman from Olympia came selling and promoting Boston Harbor. And uh, they had a meeting at the one and only little hotel in this little city. And uh, Dad went to the meeting, and he was sold on what he could find in the Northwest. So just within days, he went, uh, took the train and came to Olympia. Mm -hmm. And uh, he saw Boston Harbor, but he loved East Bay Drive, mm -hmm. going out to Boston Harbor oh. and coming back mm -hmm. through town. He saw this great big uh, gray two-story house with a big porch overlooking the bay. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was for sale. So he bought it, wired my mother, and said, sell everything, <laughs> sell, come on out. Sell that was it. come to me, right? <laughs> Isn't that great? And never regretted a minute of never it. Never regretted a minute of it, no. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so you grew up in the house there. 
Went to college, uh -huh. business college. Well, I went to Valley City Normal for a while back in North Dakota too, but just a short time. That's oh. when my father came out here. I had to come back out here. Uh, and then I... Um, uh, Tell me what it was like when you first came to Olympia. What, what, what memories do you have of, of Olympia when you first came here? You were 16, almost 17. Well, at first I was very lonesome. I uh -huh. left my childhood sweetheart back in North Dakota, uh, yeah. and I resented coming out here, to be honest with you. But uh -huh. I, uh, it didn't take me very long to get acquainted, and, and I've enjoyed it ever since. What was the city like? Olympia? Uh -huh. Well, it was very small. I think it was something like ten or 12,000 population then. Mm -hmm. And frankly, I liked it better then than I do today. Is that right? Uh, well, uh, we could go downtown at 9 o'clock at night and get an ice cream Sunday or whatever mm -hmm. on. And uh, mm -hmm. just no a, problem in being afraid to walk down the street, you know. Uh -huh. Now, of course, age could have something to do with this, too. Maybe if I were younger, I'd still walk down the street. But things have changed, not only in Olympia, but all over. Mm -hmm. You know that. Oh, sure. And, uh, uh, mm -hmm. But in those days, they had streetcar all the way up Capitol Way, um, uh, up 4th Street, up Capitol Way. And I remember one night a girlfriend and I uh, took the streetcar to her home, mm -hmm. or were going to take the streetcar to her home in Tumwater. And we missed the last car after the show, so we walked. And as we went up Capitol Way, we got to the end of Capitol Way because she lived way at Tumwater. Mm -hmm. There was a banker who lived uh, at the end of the street, and he had a long rose, a row of beautiful roses. Mm -hmm. And by this time, I think I was around 19 or so, old enough to know better, but oh, those roses were beautiful. And she and I picked lots of roses, and I think we pulled a couple up by the roots. And do you know, to this day, I feel guilty about that. <laughs> very, very guilty. <laughs> the banker never did know who it was. Did, eh? <laughs> anyway, uh, I'd kind of like to see the streetcar come back. I really would. You know, they're talking about rail transportation. Mm -hmm. I think it would be wonderful to get a lot of these cars off the street. It would help parking. It would. Just mm -hmm. be better all around. We have at the, the beginning of this show, and our viewers will be able to uh, see at the end also a short film clip that shows uh, the old oh, streetcar. Oh, really? Yeah. And, right. uh, it, it was a bu busier place, I think, downtown. Oh, well, downtown Olympia is, I, some people may resent me saying this, mm -hmm. but I like downtown Olympia. I don't like shopping in malls, mm -hmm. and I go to the mall only when I have to. Mm -hmm. Downtown now, uh, there's banks, savings and loans, one or two, I think, one men's shop, two jewelry stores. There's nothing downtown. Uh -huh. I like the old days when J.C. Penney Company was on one corner in Miller's department store across yeah. the street, and you could walk into a store, buy anything, and now you go to the mall. Uh, and, and people complain today about not shopping. They can't find a place to park in Olympia. Mm -hmm. I've never had that problem. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the mall, they won't think anything of walking <laughs> clear across the parking lot of the mall, but they won't walk through. They want to park right in front of the store. They're going, yeah. you know, when they're yeah, sure. shopping downtown. Yeah. And uh, But I... Uh, I like the old Olympia. Now, as I say, I'm only 80. I should say 29 years of age, but I'm only 82 years of age, so that may have something to do with it. But uh -huh. uh, I'd like to, s I just, am s well, I shouldn't say I'm sorry, the malls. Some people love to shop the malls, but I don't. Mm -hmm. I like the outdoors, and I don't mind walking from one store to another, rain or shine. Sure. I yeah. loved it. And going in the mall, you walk miles. Uh -huh. Of course, there was greater variety downtown than there is now. I think. Oh, well, yeah, there's, there isn't the any variety at all downtown that's, now. Uh, there are some great little gift shops and things like that. That's uh, right, lots of little gift shops, uh, lots of little restaurants. But it's tough when you have a family to, you know, not to necessarily defend the malls, but it's uh, when you have Santa Claus coming and you have to go out and get everything in a hurry and you, you need everything right there. It's uh, it does well, have its conveniences. That's right. Of course, it, of course, now you can go to. Fredericks or wherever and get everything you want in one so store, but that's so different now. Yeah. But downtown, uh, 
what we need downtown. And I think it would help all the stores mm -hmm. as a good department store. Yeah. And why someone doesn't do that, uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Why Penny's moved to the mall, I don't know. Why Miller's moved mm -hmm. out, I, I, but that's what Olympia needs now. We mm -hmm. have plenty of restaurants. In mm -hmm. fact, probably too many little ones. Yeah. You know, too yeah. much competition. Competition's good, yeah. but sometimes you get too much yeah. competition. Were there a lot of uh, restaurants in Olympia in the 20s when you when you were a young lady here? Uh, yes, but they were they there weren't so many little ones like there is now. Oh, really? There was a big restaurant, Crane's Cafe on Crane's. Capitol Way. Uh, another uh, big restaurant. I can't think of the name of it on Fourth Street. And then, of course, the Hotel Olympian with that lovely dining room. Yeah, it was lovely. Oh, that, I miss that Hotel Olympian dining room so very, very much. Was that a class act? Was it a class act there? Did they treat you right at the Oh, uh, yes, yes. When I first came here, it was the last few years of the... Uh, well, there wasn't anything there now. Yeah. The, was the dining room still here? Just closing up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, even toward the last, the dining room wasn't wasn't the old dialing room that it was in the 50s and mm -hmm. 60s. It just, mm -hmm. it just wasn't. Where did they have the big dances? Uh, in the Jade Room. In the Jade Room Upstairs. Of, the, of the Olympia. And that was lovely. We had many, many banquets in there, you know, mm -hmm. Colonist Club, Rotary Club, all oh, these clubs. Is that where high society uh, met, you might say, in the, uh, yes, the Olympia back yes. in the old days? Yes, uh -huh. uh -huh. in, in the Jade that's, Room of the Hotel uh, Olympia. That's the days when women wore long, flowing skirts and Oh, yeah. Uh, Did they have a lot of live entertainment uh, in Olympia back then, or uh, was it the reliance no. on the mo movies? And, uh, mo movies. We had to. And when you first came here, there were silent movies. When I first came movies. here, there were, yes. Uh, when I first, we first came here, there were four movie motion pictures downtown. There was the Avalon mm -hmm. and uh, the Liberty. Rex and the, Rex. the Capitol and the Olympia. The Olympia and the it Liberty? It used to be the Liberty. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 And uh, uh, Art, uh, Mr. Zabel, I can't think of his first name now, but Art Zabel is still living, one of the sons. Right, Art and, and they, Yes, they had three of the theaters. And uh, I don't remember who had a band, I think, by the name of Murphy had the, hmm. the, uh, the uh, Olympia. Hmm. One of them was owned by, I think it was Fox, Liberty was owned by originally put in, and, and they still have that name. Oh. Uh, when they closed it up and they moved and they sold it, they took the name, that's why mm -hmm. it was renamed. Oh, so. I didn't know that. I mean, uh, a man by the name of McDonald finally bought the Olympia Theater. That's right. Where the uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. arts is. So there was the uh, movies, there was uh, going out for there, sodas and the like. And there the wasn't very much. Well, of course, there was always the country club, oh, yeah. you know. But uh, uh -huh. there really wasn't very Did you enjoy the country club back Yes, then? very much. Did you very. golf? My husband and I both golfed a little bit. But we liked to golf, we like we liked to fish, we liked to hunt, and we had to make a living. And we couldn't do all those things and uh -huh. earn a living those days. And uh, so we gave up golf because we liked hunting and fishing much, uh -huh. much better. And uh -huh. we did a lot of hunting and fishing. Where did you hunt and fish? Well, I don't think there's a lake or a stream uh, uh, anywhere around here. Hicks Lake, Patterson Lake, uh -huh. and then we went to uh, up the Quinault and Cushman Lake, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, way up in the mountains. Uh, I'm going to try and think. Crescent Lake, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cushman it's Lake. So all around here. All, all around the and state the of Washington. And the hunting as well around here. Uh, I didn't go. Uh, um, I went just bird hunting, and we went up to Canada, mm -hmm. and way up into the caribou country, oh, yeah. and where we got a lot of ducks. And That's pretty. Apparent. I remember one time they were teasing me. We were uh, grouse hunting this particular day, and uh, my husband and some of the other folks were teasing me. And they said, "Well, now, Amanda, if you want to hunt grouse, you have to hit them right in the head, because if you hit them anyplace else, it ruins the meat." So we took turns going, and we rode horseback all around the caribou country. Up, I, as a girl, I read Zane Gray books. Excuse me, but, mm -hmm. and I felt like one of Zane Gray's heroines riding these horses. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we, the horses were trained, and we just put the reins on a cottonwood tree, and we hiked in through the woods. 
and it was my turn to shoot Brrr, with the grouse. And I took aim, and I shot the head right off that grouse, right off the face, right off of it. Well, they never teased me again. Now, I couldn't do that again in a million years because I wasn't that good a shot. But anyway, that was the end of the teasing where and how I should hit a grouse. But I loved it. And in those days, now the caribou doesn't have that kind of hunting anymore either. Um, they used to have, um, uh, well, these friends of ours who lived up there, they had, um, I don't know how many lakes, we call them lakes, they call them potholes, but they're more than that. But we went hunting and we'd shoot 30, 40 ducks every single day. Hmm. And then we had a lot of fun picking them afterwards. And All right, well, that gives you something to do, right? And, right. Now, we got to get back to the we. It was uh, Charles Smith that you met mm -hmm. and married here in Olympia back in 31, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I met him in um, 1930. In 30? Yeah. Married in December 31. How'd you meet? <laughs> do I have to tell you that? <laughs> <laughs> well, my brother was manager of the Union Oil Station way up in Morton, Washington. Uh -huh. And in those days, Morton held three days celebration like we do with our lake fair. Mm -hmm. And uh, my brother wanted us to come up there. Uh -huh. So I took one of the girls from the office. Uh, by that time, the, oh, I, I do want to tell you okay. about being made manager of the, the credit bureau. Okay. Please look, remind me of that. Okay. But anyway, one of the girls from the office, I took her with me and my mother, and we went up to Morton and to spend the three day celebration with my brother and his wife. And uh, we went to a dance that night, and it was upstairs. And here were all these loggers and farmers from all over the country with their blue jeans and so forth. And I was bored. Dottie was bored. And I wanted to go home, but my brother and his wife wanted to dance. So we sat there, and I was sitting there with my head down like this. And pretty soon a man came up and said, my name is Chuck Smith. May I have this dance, please? And I looked up at him and, oh, where did he come from? Tall, dark, and handsome. <laughs> so I danced with him, and instead of when the music stopped, instead of taking me back to my seat, he just kept me right in the middle of the room, and we danced the next dance. And then the third dance came along. He says, another dance? He says, I have another ticket. And he pulled out to, he says, in fact, I have a whole <laughs> pocket full of them. And we danced till 3 o'clock in the morning. Is that right? That's the way we met. Oh, and then this great. little girl who was with me from my office, she met a young man there, too. And four years later, they married. Yes. That was a good trip to that Morton, Washington. That must have been a magic, <laughs> magic trip, huh? Isn't that great? It was, and it was Charles Rochon? Charles Rochon, R-O-C-H-O-N. His mother named him, uh, he, his mother and dad named him after an army buddy mm -hmm. of his father's who was in the okay. Spanish-American War. Okay, Charles Rochon Smith. And then he was from uh, Puyallup. Puyallup. And uh, then this, uh, at this point in your life, you had graduated from uh, the uh, business college and you were working in Olympia. Well, I went to work for the Olympia Credit Bureau, who is, was owned by the uh, merchants of Olympia, merchants and professional men. And there was a man manager, and he had two girls there. Mm -hmm. And I sound like I'm bragging, and I don't mean to, believe me. But anyway, after about three weeks, he let the one girl go, and I was alone. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know anything about uh, what his duties were, but he'd come in in the morning, and he'd sort out the mail, and he'd leave. Mm -hmm. Oh, probably three, four days a week. And sometimes he'd come back to the office, sometimes he wouldn't. And one day, uh, the, uh, there was a board of directors, five uh, men on the board, mm -hmm. businessmen. And one day, uh, oh, after I'd been there about a year, I would say, uh, three of the board members came in. I knew nothing about this whatsoever. And they uh, said Mr. So-and-so, the manager's name, and um, he said, we'd like to have you clean up your desk. You are dis dismissed as of now. Hmm. I don't know what else they said to him, but the president of the uh, board turned to me and said, Miss Benny, that was my name then, mm -hmm. said, you're to take charge until further notice. Well, I was shocked, but I bet. there wasn't anything I could do. And a couple days later, uh, uh, Mr. Shelley, who was president of, that, of the board that time, mm -hmm. 
uh, called me and wanted me to call a board meeting. Mm -hmm. And I did, and they asked me if I liked my job, and I said yes. Uh, they wanted to know if I would like to be the manager, and um, uh, if I found at the end of three months, six months, or whatever, that I couldn't handle it, they'd hire a man, and I mm -hmm. could continue as secretary. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'd try. And believe me, I made up my mind, this is fine, but if I don't succeed, no way am I going back to be secretary. I'll right. look for another job. Yeah. So anyway, here's the funny, this is the funny part about this story. You talk about the quality of women and men. Uh, the manager at that time was getting $185 a month, mm -hmm. uh, which was good salary at that time. Mm -hmm. I was getting $90 a month as secretary. Well, they told me they'd raised my pay then. Mind you, they let him go. Mm -hmm. He was unsatisfactory at 185 a month. Mm -hmm. and they gave me 125 a month. Well, anyway, in a couple of months, they gave me 135 a month. Uh -huh. Then they gave me 150. And when my husband and I bought the bureau, I think it was about four years later, I still never did attain that $185. I see. Did you pay yourself that? Well, I paid myself, but I, <laughs> but I had to pay it what the board, they, they oh, okay, you know what I mean? <laughs> so then we bought the place. I always, I, now, with all this equality, yeah. women wanting the same okay. salary that men do, yeah. I often laugh at that, and I yeah, think, yeah. golly, they ought to be, try out what I did. Yeah. And at that time, I was very happy to get what I was getting, believe sure. me. When, now, when, what year would that have been? 29? Oh, 20, I went to work for the Bureau I in 25, 25 uh -huh. 26, 27, 28, 29, right around there. Uh -huh. And then, uh, and then when you bought it, tell us the story of that. You had Charles come down uh, from Puyallup, didn't you? Then at that point. <laughs> well, my husband was a bookkeeper with the Fisher Flour Mills in, the, in Tacoma, uh -huh. and he wanted me to quit my position and uh, come to Tacoma. Uh -huh. And uh, about that time, or at that time, credit bureaus throughout the nation were owned by business men, professional men. Mm -hmm. Nobody owned it, everybody owned it. Okay. And uh, uh, during this time, I bought a 1929, brand new 29 Ford, I wish I still had that. Uh, and uh, I used that car and went to all these little cities in Thurston County, Elm, Tono, sure. Tonino, mm -hmm. all these. And I made, out of the Olympic Credit Bureau, a Thurston County Credit Bureau, although we always called it Olympic Credit Bureau. And so I told my husband, I said, look, this right around now, the merchant-owned credit bureaus are being purchased by individuals. Mm -hmm. I made a success of this bureau, have mm -hmm. made it grow. I want us to buy it. Mm -hmm. I said, you move to Olympia and get And uh, so then I uh, went to the president, the uh, new president by then, told him what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, I think we can arrange that. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but first he said, we have to issue stock to everybody. Mm -hmm. So this is what we did. I don't know how the board did it. I don't recall now, but I do recall oh, okay, uh, sure. Mr. Baker, Virgil Baker, he was mm -hmm. a grand person. And he called me one day and he says, well, Amanda, Stock's all ready, it's all yours now. So I took the stock and uh, started buying. Mm -hmm. And we were short of money, so we borrowed what we could. And uh, my mother put a mortgage on our home, and we paid that off. Mm -hmm. And uh, from that, why, we just grew and grew and grew. Okay, and then you, you well, then you, after your husband passed away, you bought some more, right? Well, I didn't, uh, uh -huh. as, as myself, uh, I was tired, and I was grieving, and I just couldn't, I just couldn't uh, concentrate on business, and I, so sure. I wanted my son to take over, mm -hmm. and so he did, and he really made a great success of that. Mm -hmm. We bought the Centralia Chehalis Bureau, the Auburn Bureau, the Shelton Bureau, and then um, he came to me one day, and he said, 
Mom, I want to buy Seattle. And I said, you've got to be insane. I said, you can't touch that for less than a million dollars. And he says, I know. He says, that's how did you know the asking price? <laughs> but he, with, uh, with two other partners, uh -huh. we bought Seattle. Great. And uh, then my, my son from that just went on and on and uh -huh. on until we just grew and grew and grew. And we recently, well, not recently, about five years ago or so, sold everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my son is uh, semi-retired. Uh -huh. And he's pursuing I, his interest in music. Well, not Terry. not as such. No. You know, the paper, the paper when the uh, Lady Olympian interviewed me said something about my son being country singer, and mm -hmm. we laughed at that, uh, uh, country music singer. Yeah. But uh, he uh, loves music. He plays the piano, the organ, the mm -hmm. guitar, the accordion. I don't know what all, and uh, he's always loved music, mm -hmm. and uh, he. Uh, I don't know what, oh, I think some friends of his uh, heard him play and sing one day. Mm -hmm. And one day he just got the bright idea of going to Nashville, Tennessee, and he did. And he made a country western tape. Oh, great. And uh, I should have played some of that for you. Yeah. But anyway, then um, I, for about two years, I've been urging him to make a tape of my favorite hymns. And he just recently uh, made the tape. And they have it for sale at the uh, Good News Bookstore on Harrison. May I put that you in? You sure can. <laughs> Good News it. Bookstore on, rush out on Harrison. At least one copy. And there's also uh, uh, at the mall, South Sound Mall, the Good News Music Store there. Uh -huh. They have the tape too. Sure. And, uh, but he is now a consultant with one of the large uh, attorney firms in Seattle. I think they have something like 125 attorneys in this firm. You probably consult and he's between credit, them, right? credit consultant with oh, them. Oh, I see, yeah. But he uh, works, I think he does more fishing and hunting than he does mm. working. He goes to the office five days a week or yeah. three days a week or whatever, yeah, you know? That's not so bad. Then, Anyway, that, that gets us up, up to present, but back when you were uh, just getting into this, now you went through the 20s in Olympia, and in the 30s, the 20s were, according to all reports, boom times and pretty good for business. Yes. And then came uh, the crash of 29 and the, and the depression. I think that crash of 29 was partially what caused my father's heart attack. Oh, really? I really do. We just, it was really, he was successful and all that, but things just went. Did they go that bad, huh? Yeah. Hmm. At my age, I've gone through three three depressions, and I hope we never have another one. Well, I'll join you in that hope. Now, when in the 30s, then, uh, when you got married in 31, you must have been a bit of an optimist. Uh, <laughs> either that or swept off your feet. <laughs> if you want to know the real truth, my husband borrowed an overcoat to go to Canada. I sold my 1929 Ford, we did, uh -huh, yeah. and for $185, and we lived at the Devonshire Hotel, I think it's still uh, in operation in Vancouver, BC, for a whole week on that $185. You could spend that in one night today. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But Easy. we had a grand honeymoon. We were going to, in, and, but we didn't have anything, and we came. Whatever we've done, we've done the hard way. You did it on your own. Well, but that's I'm, good. I'm glad we did. My husband was very cooperative, and, uh, now you were in business this this whole time, and then you also had a child, yes. and you raised the child while you were still actively involved in the business. Well, I was actively involved, yes, but you know, uh, I never left the house until after my son was. Well, I didn't work until after he was about four. We had a full time maid, a uh, housekeeper, and. Uh, I spent all my time with my son. I'd take my husband down to work. We owned only one car in those days. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I'd take him to work, and then my son uh, and I would, when this was when he was about three or four years old, we'd pick up my mother on East Bay Drive. We'd out of Priest Point Park to feed the pe peacocks. She always saved mm -hmm. breadcrumbs for mm -hmm. Terry, to, for the uh, peacocks. Mm -hmm. But I, uh, during, up until he went to school, I didn't uh, work full time. I went down a couple hours, two, three hours a day because I just, I, I still feel, mm -hmm. can't do that anymore with 
prices the way they are, and I uh, admire mothers who have to work, but mm -hmm. uh, I didn't have to, and I spent my time with my son. Mm -hmm. And then when he went to school, uh, well, no, it was during when the war broke out. It was difficult to get help. Mm -hmm. My husband had quite a difficult time getting secretaries and, and stenographers because they all went to Boeing's and McCord, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, to get more money. Sure. And um, so I went down and relieved during lunch hour from about one, uh, 11 till 2. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then when my son went to school, why, uh, uh, mm -hmm. I'd go down after he left for school, but I was always home after when he got home from school at 3. Yeah and I didn't believe in babysitters. Oh. And um, uh, I was always home, and he knew if I had to be at the office, he knew it, uh, the high school at that time was on Capitol Way, mm -hmm. and it was just 11 months, I mean 11 um, blocks, mm -hmm. 11 blocks from our home to the high school, and 11 blocks from the high school to our office. So he always knew where, we, where I was, and he'd either come down to the office or he'd go home. Oh. And then when I was elected mayor, I spent all my money hiring a uh, housekeeper because uh, I wanted everything to go very smoothly for my husband and son. Mm -hmm. The house was kept up. There was always chocolate cake for my son and his friends and so forth, and that uh -huh. didn't interfere with, with me being mayor. Go. Now you had, uh, in Olympia at the time, you had in the 30s, it was tough times. I guess we had Little Hollywood down there in, the, in Capitol Lake. And uh, then in the 40s, there was a, a war-induced boom, I guess we might call it. Uh, and there were a lot of people returned from the war. A lot of young men came back. And you had a, Olympia had to busy itself, just like every place else in the US, with getting these guys back to work and adjusted okay. to civilian life. And uh, Olympia was a pretty wild place, from all accounts. <laughs> now, I was very there. wild. Was it? Very wild. Uh -huh. It was. It was. Uh, I don't like to use the word, but I, it was. Gambling and prostitution was just wide open mm. throughout. Mm. And I don't know, but uh, you asked the question of. <laughs> well. There was uh, there was a whole area of town, I'm told, which was from 4th Street north that women just didn't go. Uh, right. And that's primarily where the gambling and... Uh, well, the, the gambling was all over town. Oh, was it? Oh, yes, all over town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the taverns and places like Slot that. Slot machines and Oh, punch. yes, punch boards, slot machines, gambling, you name uh -huh. it. And I imagine a lot of... Uh, a lot of corruption, which is often a byproduct of that kind of thing. There must have been, because I was offered $2,000 not to run hmm. uh, my first term. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, that's what made me made up my mind, made me make up mm -hmm. my mind to run. Mm -hmm. uh, I was debating it. Uh, some citizens asked me to run. I don't know why. Uh, well, I think they knew that I wanted to clean up the town. You see, part of this little Hollywood, it was moved from West Bay Drive to East Bay Drive, right along in front of my mother's home. Mm. There were about five or six float houses there, mm -hmm. and prostitution and gambling just ran wild mm. down there. And I voiced my opinion of what I thought about the thing, and I think this five people who came and urged me to run for mayor and clean up the town. I think that's what prompted them. Uh -huh. And uh, I debated it because I knew nothing about... About politics? Po well, a little bit about politics. I've always read a lot. I try to keep up to it, but I knew nothing about running a city. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, or, so, uh, but anyway, I was debating it. Do I or don't I? And my husband, God love him, uh, I could do, he always let me do what I wanted to do. If you want to do this, it's, it's always fine with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, he doesn't know why I wanted to do it, but if I wanted to, it was all right. So I thought, well, I'll see. And there were just four days before filing date, and I was just going like this, yeah. do I or don't I? Mm -hmm. And I got this telephone call about dinner time. My husband and son and I were having dinner. And uh, my son was a sophomore at the time. and. Uh, 
I was asked to come over to this these people's home, and I told them we couldn't do anything, and, and they said, well, how about tomorrow night? Well, it just so happened for three or four nights, my husband and I had commitments or something mm -hmm. we were going to attend. So I said, well, I couldn't do anything until um, after a certain time, and um, this party said, oh, well, it'll be too late. I, maybe I can tell you what I want over the telephone, mm -hmm. and said it was worth $2,000 to them if I wouldn't run. Well. <laughs> I said, well, now, wait a minute. I said, this is about the greatest insult I have ever had. Mm -hmm. I said, I'll, you tell so-and-so I'll be filing in the morning. And I couldn't <laughs> wait till morning to get down to City Hall and file. So that did it, huh? And do you know that when I filed, I didn't even know what, uh, uh, oh, dear, what's that I want to know? Oh, the filing fee, or? Yeah, no. Uh, no, I knew about that. Uh -huh. Oh, well, I can't think of it right now. But anyway, it's something that everybody should know of the running for mayor, but I didn't know it until after I ran for mayor. But I studied and I found out. Oh, I'm okay. sorry, I can't even uh -huh. think of it. Oh, I don't, LID, what an LID is. Oh, an LID, yeah. right. Okay. I didn't even know what that was. Right. Well, I really had a lot of nerve to do that, but I'm glad I did. Well, maybe there's, there were some important moral issues to take care of at the time. Well, uh, anyway, uh, they went along fairly good, but the police department gave me a very rough time. Oh, did they? Very rough time. In fact, one time I got a very obscene uh, letter written in po poetry form, uh -huh. and it made my husband so angry, and he insisted on tracing it, and we traced it right to the police department, the assistant chief, oh, no. his typewriter. And um, uh, hmm. then... Uh, was he disciplined for it? Uh, no, my, my, we, I wouldn't do anything. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dis yes, I think my husband gave me talking to, and yeah. I did too, but we, we didn't yeah. take any action. But anyway, the jail, I had heard how terrible Olympia's jail was. And it took me about a month to get courage enough to go in there. Of course, I had so many other duties and things I had to learn. And uh, so finally one day I did. And if my husband were here, he would tell you that it took me three days to be able to, I couldn't get the stench mm -hmm. out of my nostrils with spray. It was the filthiest thing you ever saw. Mm -hmm. I ordered the uh, uh, blankets, all set out to clean. Mm -hmm. We burned some of the mat, took uh, some of the mattresses out to the dump. Mm -hmm. And under the cots, I think there was every magazine. It, there were so many magazines and junk under there you couldn't clean them. And uh, I ordered all that taken care of, and then I had muslin slip-on sheets put on the mattresses that were still able, that were still salvageable. Salvageable. That's good. And uh, thank you. And um, then, of course, it was, this was funny. I didn't give this, these paints this name, but I had the the whole all the halls and the whole thing all painted. And the paper came out with Olympia Mayor paints jail camellia pink, flamingo rose, and emerald green. Well, I laughed when I read that. And I did. I painted one hall rose color, another one green, and the all the cells. I painted gray like this, uh -huh. up, you know, where they put their feet on. Oh, sure. Up, and the rest of it. Like a wainscoting. Yeah, and of course, uh, I read where um, soft colors are soothing. So I had all that done in a soft camellia pink. And the drunk tank, oh dear God in heaven, I wouldn't put my well, love dogs, I wouldn't put a dog, a cat, or a pig in, in that. Yeah. It was so filthy. Huh. And there was a man in there inebriated at the time, and he kept crying for water. So I said to the uh, uh, policeman who took me through, one of the officials, mm -hmm. and I don't want to name names, and uh, I said, why doesn't somebody give him a drink? Oh, a drink of water. They're always yelling for a drink of water. And I said, they should have it. <laughs> and I ordered, uh, uh, said I was going to have a fountain put in there. Oh, he always called me Madam Mayor. They'll knock that down, the first drug that comes in here. And I said, not this one. And uh, Guy Myatt, the water superintendent, he was a doll. And he 
had a, a fountain about that big, solid cement put in there and running water all the time. <laughs> Isn't that great? And uh, then I um, had a table. You had all this trashy literature all sent to the garbage dump. And I had a small table in the hallway. And um, I went down to the drugstore or wherever, and I got Reader's Digest, uh, Ladies' Home Journal, sports magazines for men, mm -hmm. good clean literature for them to read. Well, about three, four days after that, I walked into the uh, back there. I used to go in there quite often. There was a young man or a young girl there, you know, and I'd mm -hmm. go in and counsel with them. I shocked the policeman first when I told him to let me in the cell. I went in and sat on the bunk with him, and they'd lock me in behind him. I said, just let me out when I want to come out. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I went in there. And this table where I had put this literature, everything was cleared off. And they had uh, every church in town was represented. They had uh, mm -hmm. uh, church bulletins from the First Christian Church, the Episcopal Church, mm -hmm. the Catholic Church, you name it, all mm -hmm. of it, all there. And right on top of all that church literature was, do you remember the old Esquire magazine they used to have sure. out? Well, it wasn't the nicest magazine, but that was there, and the picture on top of that was a naked lady. Huh. Well, over all the churches? On all that church stuff. Well, I think that they heard me, cleared out to Capitol Way, I raised, holy heck. And believe me, that was never touched again. The next day, all my magazines were back oh, there again. Good. Good but this you. is what I mean. They gave me a bad time. Well, mm -hmm. then when I was reelected the second time, I doubled my majority, by the way. I'm proud of that. And uh, one day, uh, uh, one of the officials, the police department head official, wanted to know if I'd go for a walk with uh -huh. him. Where are we going? Well, I just want, to, want you to see something, Madam Mayor, that's mm -hmm. what they call me. And um, so he took me back of the uh, two or three of the taverns, back of the spar, back of the Capitol Cigar Store, so forth. The mm -hmm. spar is still in business, but it's all right, I guess. But anyway, uh, in these back rooms, and I pretended to be very naive, and I said, well, I don't know what you want to show me. All I see is a bunch of of uh, tables and chairs all upside down. Well, that's it, Madam Mayor, that's it. He said, they're going broke. They just can't stay in business. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, if you mean gambling, I said, I'm sorry, but I promised the people a clean town and clean it's going to be. And I was offered $48,000, $1,000 a month for the next four years if I would just turn and look the other way. Ooh. I'll tell you a funny story about that, too. I think my grandson was about 17 when he first heard that story. And he said, Nana, you were offered $48,000 and you turned it down. And I says, well, honey, would you have been proud of your grandmother had she accepted? Well, Nana, no, but $48,000. <laughs> So when you talk about Oh, that was corruption. the 50s, yeah. That's, yes. Uh, that was, uh, you can multiply that, it's about 150,000. I yeah. know, I know. Now, money. if that goes on and went on, and or it goes mm -hmm. on in some cities, mm -hmm. in a small town like that, can you imagine what goes on in some of our cities? Oh, yeah. Now, no sure. one can tell me. There, there are people who are... I don't know whether they're naive or just what, but they won't believe that that goes on. Mm -hmm. But it does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and believe me, I'm living proof that it does. Mm -hmm. Well, it must have been a real eye-opener once you got in and you learned what an LID was and, oh. and all this other stuff, huh? Did you, enjoy, uh, did you enjoy being mayor? Yes. Well, let me put it this way. I wouldn't take a million dollars for the experience, but I wouldn't take a million dollars to do it again either. <laughs> So it was. Uh, it took a lot of time. Yes. It was a lot of work. A lot of work. A lot mm -hmm. of time. Uh, of course, I did something that I don't think many mayors do. Uh, I spent full time. Mm. My husband, God love him. Well, I remember one night he nudged me. I was talking to myself out loud again. Well, in fact, what I said is, <laughs> this is when the paper was giving me one newspaper gave me a bad time. The oh. the. Uh, the um, 
two radio stations, Seattle PI, the Oregonian, they all gave me support. Uh -huh. But for some reason or other, my local paper, they're great now. And I did, oh yes, uh -huh. they're, the Olympians changed. Uh -huh. But they had a manager at that time, or editor I should say, who just didn't like women. Uh -huh. And uh, uh -huh. for some reason, I remember his wife gave a party one time, and he put, instead of putting it in the society page, they don't have that now, but they mm -hmm. used to have it mm -hmm. those days. He put it in, right in the middle of the front page. Mrs. So-and-so entertained guests, and they viewed the view through freshly washed windows. <laughs> that was his old wife that he was, was talking wife, about. Right. And he gave me a bad time. Excellent. But um, uh, <laughs> I was very fortunate in, um, as far as city, uh, uh, working in the city, I uh, appointed a man, clerk, who later turned out to be administrator for years, hmm. Mr. Marshall. Oh, Eldon Marshall. Eldon. You know him. Sure, I do. He's a doll. Yeah. His wife won't mind if I say I just love him because I love her too. <laughs> Eldon gave me a lot of support, and uh, I don't know what I would have done without him. Hmm. But I went down to City Hall. I didn't go down just on Tuesday when they had their commission meeting. I went down there every single day, checked mm -hmm. the police department, checked this, checked that, mm -hmm. uh, put my uh, nose in where I wasn't wanted sometimes. And uh, I don't think there's an alley in this town that I didn't walk. And by the way, those alleys are not as clean as I'd like to see them. Mm -hmm. But at that time, I... Uh, I just took an active interest in yeah. it. I was a full-time mayor. Good for you. And that was the Eisenhower years. Yes, for the rest I guess. Of the nation. I guess. Yeah, I guess. Sure. Fifty-three to, to sixty. Yeah. And well, I was uh, the only woman mayor of oh, yeah, the capital city at that time. I bet. Yeah. And I also served four years on the um, uh, uh, Selective Service Commission, oh, and I enjoyed that I very that. much. Now that was difficult. There were yeah, times yeah. when young men came in, mm -hmm. and we had to determine whether yeah. is their story true or are uh -huh, they trying uh -huh. to get out of the draft or what. It was difficult. Sure, I was the only happen. woman on that board too, but I enjoyed that very, mm -hmm. very much. Now, being a being a woman, when you when you assumed the mayor's chair, then uh, you also assumed great responsibility and and you put yourself out on the on the firing line. Now, I assumed that it was tough being a woman, but there must have been some advantages to it as well. Well, or did did you pay much attention to anything? To, to me, uh, I didn't pay any attention. Uh, someone asked me just the other day mm -hmm. uh, if I felt that being a woman, uh, or how it felt being a woman uh, at that time when women weren't active in mm -hmm. politics, so forth. And I said I never gave it any thought, and mm -hmm. I really didn't. Mm -hmm. I I just ran. I just I don't know. Mm -hmm. You just did what you I thought just needed what being I, done. Right, right. Just like, I guess, uh, there was a, if I remember correctly, it wasn't Margaret Chase Smith from uh, New England who mm -hmm. was a senator for years mm -hmm. back then as mm -hmm. well, during the Eisenhower yes. years, right? Mm -hmm. She was, so I and think she must have been like, like you, just said, well, I think I should do this. Yeah, there was a woman mayor in Portland at that time, too, Dixie Lee. Uh -huh. uh, uh, she was mayor of Portland. But, of course, Portland was the capital city, but that didn't make a difference. Mm -hmm. There were a few, but not very many mm -hmm. at that particular time. So you but kept your eye on what needed to be done, and not uh, not what you were you, what you were about personally. Did, it didn't make it. Uh -huh. uh, not, I never even thought, man, woman, or, you know, I mm -hmm. just never gave it any thought. You had some other issues that were pretty important at the time. One of them was the uh, coming of the interstate. Oh yes. The traffic was a real mess in Olympia, wasn't it? From uh, well, before the interstate. Well, traffic is still bad in Olympia, yeah. but where isn't True. it bad? Or, True. You know. Well, at that time, yes, they wanted to put the freeway right through the heart of Olympia. Right and down I bought Capitol that. Is? Yes, right, right down, down Capitol. Right about where the Governor Hotel is, right about there. And I fought that hard, and uh, we won that issue. And I'm no, very glad they did because, as you would, I taught what they did to some of our cities. Oh. Well, I, I have friends in Tumwater who uh, well, Tumwater, still I, ruin the day. I'll let you say that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they ruined Tumwater. They took the, the heart right out right. of it. Right. They would have done that to Olympia, mm -hmm. but I fought that. Mm -hmm. And another thing that I'm very proud of uh, that I fought is uh, making, um, they wanted to make Sylvester Park a parking lot. Oh, right. right. And you know, there's 
apartments and elderly people have enjoyed that park for years and years. They used to have a fountain there at one time, mm -hmm. but so many people threw debris in there. There were, uh, when I first came to Olympia, I think they had a couple of swans in there and it was really beautiful. Mm -hmm. But um, I said no way and uh, the commissioners with whom I worked were all eager for it. So I just put it to a vote of the people and it was voted down five to one. Good. And yeah. then um, after I was out of office, another mayor brought it up at uh, one of the service clubs. Hmm. And I happened to be walk going into the Hotel Olympian for lunch that day. And uh, a couple of the, um, the men from the service club came out and said, Amanda, you'd better get in touch with so-and-so. He brought up the issue of making Sylvester Park into a, a parking garage. Parking uh, garage again and I said over oh, my dead body and I went right straight to this gentleman I says what is this I hear and he says I don't know and he grinned and I said well look I'm not the mayor now mm -hmm. but I want you to know that I'll fight that as hard and much harder than I did before mm -hmm. there are elderly people in apartments all around who just look forward to that right. and not only that but a person has to come from the heart of North Dakota to and not see a tree for miles yeah. and and to really appreciate yeah. a spot like yeah. Sylvester Park. Oh, it's such a beautiful spot. Oh, it's such a beautiful. beautiful. I hope that no one ever gets Olympia, a bright idea to destroy that. Olympia is such a such a beautiful town. Uh, like I said, I'm I'm uh, I love it. And you and uh, I both. And I'm sure I join everybody else here in thanking you for what you did for Olympia. It's a great uh, Credit not only to you, but I think to your generation and uh, some of the some of us in the in the later generations appreciate it. Thank you and uh, well, and I want to thank you for being thank thank as long as you're thanking me. Thank the people of Olympia who you supported betcha. me. They deserve a lot of thank you, you because betcha. I couldn't have done it alone. You betcha, man, and thank you very much for being on the story of Olympia with us. You've added a lot to our story. And thank you, and I'm so happy to learn that you are a Christian. Thank you, we need more Christians in this world. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for being part of our story of Olympia, too. The story of Olympia. It's a story about a place known for many things. It's the village once promoted as the Pearl of the Puget Sound. It's the town that oysters and water made famous. It's the capital city of Washington State. But more than anything else, Olympia is a place that people made great. So join us, won't you, in our stories of old Olympia. It's a tribute to our town's quiet heroes, the workers and the dreamers, the pioneers and the builders. They're all part of our story. They're all home folk. While they don't always make headlines, they do make cities, and our city's a better place because of them. Welcome. I'm Joe Willing, your host for the story of Olympia. Cities measure their lives by events and by the people who make them. Back in September of uh, 1922, when Leon and Ann Bennick left North Dakota with a young 17-year-old girl. Little did they know what uh, kind of event they were bringing to us here in Olympia. That girl, Amanda Bennick, met a young man in Morton called Charles Smith. They married, and Amanda Smith made some history here in Olympia. Matter of fact, this is, the, uh, this is kind of a milestone event for our story of Olympia in that uh, we're doing a second part because of uh, a lot of requests to learn more about what Amanda did here in Olympia and uh, Amanda's contribution to Olympia. And so we're doing Amanda Smith, the sequel. Welcome, Amanda. Thank you, Joe. It's nice to have you back. Thank you. It's very happy. I'm very happy to be back. 
But before you start asking me any questions mm -hmm. about what I did and what I didn't do, I would like to tell the viewers here that if I sound like I'm boasting, please excuse me, because I don't mean to boast. I've been asked, what did I do? And that's what I want to do, just tell what I did. No boasting, because of all the things that I did, I couldn't have done them alone. Yeah. <coughs> well said. Amanda, I want to talk a bit uh, and dwell a bit upon your time in office. Uh, you were not only the first woman mayor, but as mayor, you did a lot, you made a lot of changes in this town, and changes for the better, I might add. Thank you. And uh, I wanted to talk about your time in office and also about your campaigns for office. Uh, campaigns have been a very tempestuous affair as of late. Uh, I think they may have changed a bit, at least in terms of cost and length. And what was your campaign for your, your runs in office like? Well, in the first place, Joe, I paid all my own expenses. I didn't ask corporations and people to donate any money to my campaign. My first campaign, I had three donations, one for $50, one for $10, and one for $2. And mm -hmm. the $2 one was made from a little lady that worked at Miller's department store at that time. And she sold, sold hosiery to me all the time. Mm -hmm. And one day I was in there, and she pressed two $1 bills into my hand. And I said, what's that for? Oh, she says, I know this is costing you money. And, and the, the second campaign, too, I didn't spend any money. My first campaign, as I recall, cost about $250. <laughs> of course, that was 250 real dollars. At, well, that's true, As opposed too. to our inflated dollars, eh? And uh, do you remember how many people you ran against? Uh, how many were going for the office? Then? Oh, the first time, I, I can't say whether it's the first time or the second time, but there were three or four always, and the last uh, time there were five men, I mean my second term, there were five men. The opposition were so determined to get me out of office that they had a few people run in office who'd been in Olympia a good many years, mm -hmm. and they were just certain that these men could beat me. Mm -hmm. And I was just as certain that I was going to beat them. <laughs> and if, if I recall, you doubled your majority. Yes, I did. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> this just shows that uh, you did a few things right, eh? Well, the people wanted a clean town, and this is what I promised them. Yeah, yeah. It needed some cleaning up from, of course, I wasn't around then, but uh, from, from what I hear. Uh, <coughs> you did a lot while you were in office. Um, it used to be that when you came to Olympia, the, well, it wasn't quite as attractive when you first came. You did something with the entrance. You're talking about the entrances to the city, yes. Uh, that came about, uh, my husband and son and I went through all through Canada one time and, and traveled through the various cities in Olympia. And we noticed in so many cities, they always had an entrance, a little flower garden, mm -hmm. and it was attractive. And I thought, golly, why don't we do that in Olympia? Mm -hmm. So I did, and I was a member of the garden club at one time, and I had the garden club ladies plant a few things at the south entrance on Plum Street. Mm -hmm. And today, it's just beautiful. And then on the east side, there was a gravel pit there, and I planted some flowers there, and the Shell Oil Company kept that watered for me until Mr. Shane, our public works department mm -hmm. uh, um, commissioner, mm -hmm. uh, had water piped in there. That was the east entrance. And then on the west side, there was um, also, you know where, the, where you go up Harrison Street, that mm -hmm. divider between Fifth Fifth Street Between the Bridge. two bridges yes. on the west side of the, yeah. of the inlet. Right. That was just a gravel pit also. And I had dirt put in there and, and uh, had that beautified. Mm -hmm. And then the north side was Priest Point Park, and we had a new sign put there, and it was beautiful. And before I go any farther, I want to uh, uh, commend the, the city council today. A lot of things they do that I don't approve of, but... <laughs> A lot of things they do I approve of. Okay. But uh, I want to commend them. And the, these entrances, all four of them, and I'm certain that the um, Parks Department manager mm -hmm. deserves a lot of credit for that. But they are beautiful. They've recently replanted them. Mm -hmm. And they, we have four lovely entrances to the city. And they're great. Yeah. And they've done a lot to clean up Priest Point Park. That, I have a little sore spot in my heart for Priest Point Park. There used to be a chalet there when we first moved here. And the teenagers had a place to dance, run nicely, clean, you know. Mm -hmm. 
but the two commissioners with whom I worked the first time uh, wanted to tear that down, and it's too bad because that was a historic place. And there were all kind of animals there, monkeys, tigers, whatever. Around the chalet? Uh, right around Priest Boyd Park oh. itself. Mm -hmm. And they had a, a concession there where you could buy popcorn and hamburgers, and I just wish that would. We have the most beautiful, I think Priest Point Park's one of the prettiest parks in the state, mm. and why we can't do more to it. However, the present parks department mm -hmm. have really cleaned it, and it's beautiful right it is now. It's beautiful. It's too bad it isn't used more. But the chalet would be. Uh, the chalet would have been, oh, that could have been. Was it in pretty bad shape? Is that why? Uh, well, it wasn't brand new, but it could have been reconstructed. Not it was my house. <laughs> <laughs> right. But None it of still us. works. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, I didn't think it deserved being torn down, but two commissioners mm -hmm. voted against me, and so down came the chalet. And now, and now we keep looking for a place <laughs> the kids can congregate, Isn't right? that the truth? So. Isn't that the truth? But the animals, were they caged then? Or? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, there were monkeys there, the young people, well, all of us mm -hmm. used to go down there and watch the animals and all kinds of the of the fowl, uh -huh. uh, parrots, I don't know. It would be a nice place to walk and, on a Sunday, huh? Yes, beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, it was much more used than it is now. Yeah, that's, uh, and that's, well, I guess that's the most historic s spot, at least for us uh, Caucasians in, in Olympia. Uh, that was the site of the uh, French brothers, uh, missionaries from uh, Quebec. Yes. They came here in the 18, before 18, in the 1840s, I guess. That's before my time. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, if I remember correctly, it was uh, in there, were, there was trouble with that property, and I think it was George Montman, although I'm not sure, and I should have looked this up. Yeah, I meant to look that up too, Joe. I really don't know who donated that to the city. But there, some but there was some, uh, there was a, a quite a controversy there. Uh, at one time, somebody sold some mm. oh, what a lovely timber there, and you can't do that. That's right, part of the grant deed is That's right. it restricts timber, which is a lovely way to, a lovely way to do it. Yeah, that, that would We could have be. lost that park. Well, and there are other parks that you've been involved with. Now, Sylvester Park, uh, well, for Sylvester example. Park, I'm proud to say I saved that twice. Uh, um, there were s certain people in town who wanted to make that a parking lot. And I thought, my land, all they need to do is go back to North Dakota and try to find a park like that. Yeah. And my, the people use that park and have mm -hmm. through the years. And uh, I thought, well, we can find another place for the parking lot. And it really was... Uh, in danger of being made into a parking lot. And we had to put to the vote of the people, it was voted down five to one. Good for you. And then after I was out of office, I heard a rumor that it was proposed again to one of the service clubs. And I was just walking past the uh, Hotel uh, Olympian when I was told this by a couple of these service men. And not service men, but I mean service, service club. club people. Right? And I said, over my dead body, and I walked in there and I took the man by the lapels <laughs> and I says, what's this I hear about you? And then I said, well, now, wait a minute. I'm not the mayor now, mm -hmm. but I'll work harder than I ever did before. And then I haven't heard anything about it since. <laughs> I, that's a pet of mine. <laughs> well, good for you. That's a, that's a wonderful park. And at the time, I don't think people realized what a treasure it was. Oh, my. Well, they're beginning to realize it now, I oh, think. And it's yeah. well used. Yeah. Although it's, uh, well, and then there's Capitol Lake Park. Well, the Capitol Lake area is something else of which I'm very proud and take full credit for. Um, uh, we were up in Canada one time and I noticed along the Penticton River mm -hmm. and around Kelowna, there was this river, they had uh, uh, grass all along the river bank and benches, umbrellas, and I thought, gee, that would be beautiful around Capitol Lake. Mm. So just about that time, they were building the, uh, starting to build the administ state administration building. Mm -hmm. And Charlie Hoddy was the administrator. So I called him and I said, Charlie, what are you doing with all that dirt mm -hmm. from excavating the basement? He said, well, I'm looking for a place to, to uh, dump it. He said, you want it in your backyard? You know, mm -hmm. kidding. And I said, no, but I have a place about five blocks from there. And so he, Charlie Hoddy had all the dirt hauled in there and that, where the, uh, where the whole lake fair now and all mm -hmm. that was all filled in. And now, today, my, that is so used. Lake fair uh, mm -hmm. every year and uh, 
and they have the polar bear swim. By the way, I crowned the first Lake Fair Queen, Margie Stackhouse. And last year I crowned the uh, polar bear <laughs> queen too. Mm -hmm. But that is used so much. Oh, and yeah. I am um, a very disappointed in that they've made a parking area there along that, the lake. Right, right there, yeah. yeah. But uh, I'll tell that when I, I'll tell you that when you ask me about what my dreams are. Oh, okay, <laughs> good. But uh, the parks have been very important, and so has your, uh, well, I guess it's your occupation with, uh, or preoccupation with how we spend our time, not only at work, but at leisure. Uh, parks, walking, and then also those who really can't speak for themselves, like uh, uh, the dumb animals that uh, we shelter at the Humane Society, the pets. And you have a story about the... Uh, well, uh, when I took off, well, before I took office, I heard of the things that were going on at the jail and now the police department and the uh, the uh, city dog pond. Mm -hmm. And uh, usually on Sunday after I'd leave church, I'd stop at the drugstore and I bought the Sunday papers, take down there to the inmates at the jail. Mm -hmm. And uh, this particular Sunday I went down there and I heard the dogs barking something terribly. So I asked the uh, sergeant at the desk who had charge of the dog pond that weekend and uh, he was out on the uh, street and they called him in. And the condition of that dog pond was, oh my, it was deplorable. The, 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 the two little pans that they had for, with water, the little puppies couldn't even reach that. Mm. The, the algae was thick in those pans. And this was a hot, hot summer day. Well anyway, I told the policeman in charge, I said, well, roll up your sleeve, we're gonna clean this up. And he flipped his hand on his trousers and he says, well, Madam Mayor, as they called me at the police department, he says, when I send this suit to the cleaners, I have to pay the cost. Well, I had just come from church and I was dressed up too. So I said, well, we'll call him John. That wasn't his name. And I said, John, when I send this suit to the cleaners, I said, I have to pay the bill too. I said, now let's get to work. So he took one pan, I took the other, and we cleaned up the pans. and. Uh, then I had um, uh, the Public Works Commission wired, I mean, uh, plumbed some, some plumbing, put some plumbing in there, so we had fresh water for the dogs all the time. Yeah. And um, just like I did in the jail, as I told in my first session about having yeah, fresh right. water for the, the inebriated people. <laughs> in, the, in the drunk tank. But anyway, uh, then uh, one day, uh, Marion Lemon, she was the wife of Gary Lemon, who was a banker here in mm -hmm. town, and Ruth Evans and her husband was a um, uh, pork commissioner at the time. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Marion and Ruth came in to see me about the dog pond, and they deserve full credit for starting the Humane Society. Oh. And then we got rid of our dog pond. Well, good for them. Now they're down on uh, Thurston Street, I think. It yes. Is. Where were they then? Uh, there wasn't any. Just oh, the, you mean the dog the pond? pond? Yeah. Oh, the pond was right back of the. Um, uh, right back of the uh, city hall, the old city hall. Uh -huh. Well, but the, the old city hall is still there. It was it, to yeah. the north, mm -hmm. to the north there. Right. But it was. Uh. So you had a you had a real Sunday routine. You. Uh, <laughs> yes, I did that uh, practically yeah. every Sunday. You had to go, you get up, go to church, and then take your walk and get uh, get a head count for the jail and get newspapers for them. Well, I got a head count from jail, and I took the PI and the uh, the uh, Times. Mm -hmm. At that time, it was two papers, oh, right. and then I always took Hershey bars. If there was one inmate, I got a Hershey bar. Gillette and Guppies. If there were six, I'd buy six Hershey bars. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have an expense account either. This was just. <laughs> you know, I, I, it, it amazes me when I see all the politicians today, from ground on up, mm -hmm. uh, have to have an expense account for every penny they spend. And the way things are going here, I think we need a foreign affairs office. Going around the, around the world so much, but that's another matter, isn't that's it? That's another matter, yes. But uh, then you would go check the pound out and then uh, maybe have a walk at Priest Point Park. And Sometimes. Depending on the weather, of course. Right, right. Yeah, I could get, uh, there was a, it was a Walking lot. Walking was one of my main hobbies. I don't do much of it anymore, but. Well, you're starting again. I hope. Yeah, you bet. That's, uh, you can't do better than that. It was, uh, and of course, the. Uh, it was a much busier place, I think, downtown back then. All the retailing, right? Oh, in the 50s. yes. Yes, very busy. 
However, I was one of three. Uh, one was Doc, uh, Matthew Hill, who was a Supreme Court judge, and the other was, uh, uh, oh dear, I can't think of his name. He was minister of the Presbyterian Church at the time. Mm -hmm. And I, and we taught the Merchants of Olympia closing on Sundays. Oh. And they all closed except two. And then later on, the, the, that one of those two closed too, all but one. Hmm. And they did for a long time, but through the years they're all open now. Oh, now they're not op open on Sunday, they're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Surprising they close at all. Yeah. For anything, yeah, even Christmas, true. huh? However, it was, a, it was a different place. It was very busy. That was the time of uh, all, the, uh, Tremendous change, I guess, not only not only here, but in the highway system. Uh, they took the highway out of Olympia, out of downtown Olympia. Yes, that's yeah. another thing I thought that would have had, had we not. Of course, I can't take full credit for that, right. uh, but I had part of it, you know, a part in it. Uh, that a freeway would have gone right about where um, uh, the Governor Hotel is now. That yeah. would have just ruined the city. But yeah. anyway. As it did to Tumwater, I'm, I'm told by others. Yes, it yes, it did. It really right it. took the heart out of Tumwater. That's yes, true. Yes. That's what it would have done to Olympia. Well, yes. but that they was call those things progress, though, Joe. Well, at least they did back then, huh? Maybe. <laughs> I know. Uh, maybe we learn from our history, and maybe that's one of the. Maybe that. Maybe that'll. Uh, maybe we'll spark a few good ideas with this series. Here's um, my idea. And uh, <laughs> maybe we'll have a impact of some sort. There were some uh, streets that you changed as well when you were mayor. There, uh, there were a lot of red brick streets at the time, weren't there? Still well, there were just two. Uh -huh. uh, the red brick was along um, Fifth Avenue and Washington Street, mm -hmm. and replaced all, oh, that red brick was terrible when you went to cross the street, oh. but that was replaced, yes. Now, uh, the plans were all made while I was in office, but part of the work was finished after it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was out of office. Mm -hmm. So but, that was that must have been a big big project. Then. But it was that administration that took care of it, not the one that was taking credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> and then there were uh, you had a lot to do with street lights too at the time. Maybe yes, we we replaced the street lights all down Harrison Street, <clears throat> along State Avenue, mm -hmm. and well, all the new new lights. Right. And uh, I did a. Uh, Girl Scout deed during that time. There was a man who lived on State Avenue who was dying of cancer. Mm -hmm. And he told his daughter that he would love to, if he could just live, to see the lights and, and get better so he could see the lights up and down State Avenue. And I said, well, I'll tell you what I'll do, uh, his daughter, Esther. I said, if you can get permission from the doctor to get him out of the hospital, I'll get an ambulance and we'll take him to the top of State Street right past your dad's house so he can see the lights in the ambulance. And we did that. And uh, Red Isom owned the, everybody, in, older people in Olympia will remember Red Isom. Uh, he had the red top taxi at that mm -hmm. time. Well, anyway, they put him in, the, they put this man in the uh, ambulance. They came down State Street, and God love Red Isom, wherever he is. Uh, he had another man with him, and they took this gentleman out of the ambulance and held him up like that so he could see the lights. Oh. And the man died about a week later. Well, I'm good for, awfully good for happy them, to huh? me. It's just a Girl Scout deed, and I'm glad. And her daughter and I often speak of that. She yeah. and I have been friends since 1922. Is that right? Since you, since you came here. Mm -hmm. Isn't that great? That's. There were uh, some other changes. Uh, in your administration, one of the, I think, major changes was moving the site of the city dump. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was one of my main campaign issues. Uh -huh. The city dump at that time was right down uh, on the, uh, at the end of the, well, the most southerly tip of Puget Sound there. It's all landfill okay. down. And uh, they were filling that, and they were filling it with the city de um, uh, with garbage. This would be not well, the court property. I really yeah. don't know uh, if things have changed so much, no. but it's along State Avenue, just mm. south. I mean, north just of north, State, towards, north of State, towards the Olympics or north of State. Yes, yeah. right. But whenever anyone came into town, whether it was from the uh, 
uh, well, no matter where, Olympia just was shrouded in smoke mm. and stench, I might add. And uh, they were dumping everything there and burning it. Mm. And it was terrible. <laughs> well, anyway, I uh, decided I was going to move it, and we owned some property. The city owned some property uh, east, uh, west of Olympia. And I moved the dump there. And about a week after it was moved, there was a mysterious fire in the woods out here. Mm. But uh, we laughed about that. But anyway, I uh, had a garbage superintendent uh, at that time, and he gave me some very good advice. And if anybody's going to move a dump, they should consider that. But the dump down here not only was shrouded in, in smoke, and the stench was terrible, but it was the rats, just filled with rats. And this uh, garbage superintendent said to me, do you mind if I give you some advice? And I said, not at all. I'm always welcome good advice. And he said, well, give me the permission that when we move the dump, for me to dump for about a month a few loads of garbage down there and poison it heavily. Otherwise, the rats will scatter all over town. Mm. I remember that. Yeah. And all that, that garbage dump was really something. But there were, there were, there were those who opposed moving it, is Oh, that? yes. Why would, why would they oppose moving it? Is you tell me. The cost? Or? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you couldn't. There's no cost to it. We owned the property on the west side. Right. I, think, I don't think it was that so much. I think it was just neglect. Hmm. The city officials of that but time just weren't doing anything, period. Isn't that funny? Would I pat myself on yeah. the back? <laughs> there you go, I'll pat you too. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's perplexing. Yeah, the most beautiful part of the city is a dump. Well, not only that, a capital city. Yeah. And, and to come into it from any angle, it was just... And of course, that was the main way in, and that, was, right. uh, the, that, was, our equivalent, that was the equivalent of our interstate. Right. Hmm. It's like, uh, that would have been worse than Tacoma's. <laughs> well, the stench was almost as bad as, as Tacoma's uh, smeller, yes. Mm. Well, you never know why some people would oppose things. I can't imagine that. Now, the retail district was, of course, the hub of everything. It was downtown mm -hmm. back then. How far did that extend? How far did that retail activity extend? Right now... Well, uh, practically just right... Right there? Right here, right in the okay. city limits. I mean, right yeah. now you can take a dart and just about throw it at a map and you'll hit a shopping center. That's right. But back then, wasn't there a proposal to make downtown kind of a mall? Yes, and there again I'd like to give the credit to Clarence Shane, who was our public works commissioner at the mm -hmm. time. And I think that the model itself, I think Arvid Grant had something to do with, mm -hmm. with making that model. And I'm not sure. I meant to check that, Joe. Mm -hmm. I think the, that model is still down at the Chamber of Commerce office. But that mall would have been, would have gone down Washington Street and Fifth Avenue. Mm -hmm. And Nordstrom's were ready to come in. Frederick's were ready to come in. I think the bond. And uh, had had the merchants in Olympia gone along with that at that time, and it could have been built, as we talked about, for about a million dollars. Yeah. Today, it would cost, what, 10 times, 15 times that, about 10 million anyway. But there were the property owners, there were five or six property owners, mm -hmm. and they just would not spend the money, and they, the five or six they who turned opposed it, it down. Mm -hmm. And of course, they were sitting on top of the world back That's then. That's right. The They're all gone now. And how things change, huh? Yeah, it's a shame. You have pawn shops right where... It... Uh, I think Gary Lemon... Oh, I shouldn't be mentioning na names, so, um, but I think Gary Lemon and Noyce Talcott were the ones who were for it. Mm -hmm. They were for the mall, but they were voted down yeah. by the majority. So we have no mall. Now we have the South Sound Mall and the one out here and another mall here. Mall's all over. And we have Lacey, which uh, we right. didn't have back then. Yes. Well, that Lacey Mall is what I call the South Sound Mall. Right. But then you have the whole city of Lacey, yeah, which right. is, uh, has, has come about since... Uh, were, were there efforts back then to annex that portion of, of Thurston County into the city of well, Olympia? We could have, yes. Olympia could have gone all the way to Nisqually at one time. And why... Uh, but the Lacey, uh, uh, there was a man in uh, Lacey at the time, a contractor by the name of Homan. Mm -hmm. Al Homan. Al Homan. Did you, Al? you know? I didn't know Al, but I knew Anna. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, she's sure. a dear. She's gone, too, yes. you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, he really has deserves a lot of credit for making Lacey grow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, in some ways, it's great. In some ways, it's too bad, though, that we have uh, such duplication. In yes. That, uh, it, it, 
course, I guess. Much, it would be much less expensive to the, to the taxpayer, mm -hmm. you know. And there was a, a, a move to annex Tumwater, but the uh, men in office with me at the time wanted to annex all of Tumwater's taxable property. Mm -hmm. And I opposed that. And in fact, I was asked, are you the mayor of Tumwater or the mayor of Olympia? <laughs> and I said, look, if Tumwater residents want to be annexed into the Olympia, mm -hmm. I'll be the first one out there with open arms. But the people have to want it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't force that. Yeah. I don't suppose the brewery was very happy about that. I don't remember no. what stand the brewery took, very no. frankly. I don't remember that. Well, it seemed to diminish their influence a bit, at least. Uh, I, I've heard, uh, I have friends in Tumwater who say they'd love to annex today into Olympia if they could just call the place Tumwater. Oh, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> you've heard that, haven't you? Yes, I've heard that. But uh, you've also, uh, we were discussing a little bit earlier, your, your concern for people like the inmates and bringing them Hershey bars and something to read and, and the dogs, but there's also the seniors that uh, you reached out to, and there's an oh. organization called the Golden Age Club. Oh, yes, I'm proud of that, too, and I'll take full credit for that. At that particular time, uh, Practically everyone were stressing activities for the youth. Well, I was a lot younger in those days, and I said, look, the young people can find things to do, but there are older people mm -hmm. who have nothing to do. Mm -hmm. So I uh, called a meeting and uh, uh, got as many senior citizens out as we could get. And I, if I recall, there were about 40 who came to that meeting. And I organized the Golden Age Club, and I had them elect their own officers. And I don't know what the, what the um, membership is now, but I think it's over 400. And uh, then I talked the commission into um, allowing the seniors uh, to um, uh, using the community center one day a week with no cost. And um, so they each one they would pay 15 cents, each one paid 15 cents and brought their own sack lunch, and that 15 cents bought coffee and donuts and tea and cream, and their own officers handled all that and took care of it. Mm -hmm. And then I provided programs. I had the officer, or the um, generals at Fort Lewis, a timer, several times, send in a, some troops in with, there's a lot of talent out at Fort Lewis, oh, you, you know. Yeah. And uh, anyway, that Golden Age Club are still going strong, and of course they're meeting at the Senior Center now, mm -hmm. and um, I had the pleasure of installing their officers last year. Oh, isn't that nice? They yeah. asked me if I'd install their and officers. And you had something to do with the Senior Center too, didn't you? Yes. There again, I was uh, down south. After my husband passed away, I went south every year for several months, and when I came home, there was a letter waiting for me from um, Court Skinner. Mm -hmm. I saw Court not long ago. And, um, asking me to come to a meeting for senior citizens, and I right away thought, uh-oh, what are they going to do to my Golden Age Club? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went to the meeting, and court met me at the door, and uh, they were going to organize a senior center. And uh, then I had a great deal to do with it when it was on Washington Street. We just had a small two little rooms there in the Capitol Theater yeah. building with the entrance on Washington. and. Um, it grew and grew and grew, and I had, uh, oh, I may had donations uh, from banks and savings alone and any of the merchants who wanted to donate. Mm -hmm. And we, excuse me, we furnished the place, and uh, uh, God love my mother. She was 94 at the time, and she donated a table, I remember. Mm -hmm. And uh, she also brought cookies down there practically every week. She always said she was taking cookies to the old folks. <laughs> Here she was 94. but. Um, the, uh, the uh, had the officers, I was the first president of the first board of directors, and we were looking for uh, a director for the lounge. And one day I was uh, standing on the street corner, and I saw Mr. Callahan, William Callahan, who was minister of the uh, uh, Methodist Church, mm -hmm. and I knew he had retired, and I said, ah, there's our man. And uh, he wasn't sure, but he uh, decided he would do that, and he was our first director down there. And then they moved to Columbia Street, mm -hmm. and then now at the senior, we have the beautiful no. senior lounge as a result of all that. Mm -hmm. A few, uh, a few um, dedicated citizens. Like I say, I can't take full credit for mm -hmm. that, but I did a lot toward it. 
It's amazing what uh, one person with a plan can do, huh? Oh, isn't that the truth? Yeah. I wish more people would become interested in doing for others. Yeah. Our youth, our middle-aged, all of ages, you know? Yeah, it's not, uh, you know... You, Especially how, the el elderly who can't do things mm -hmm. for themselves. When, when you were in office, how were the, the meetings? Were they very well attended? Did you have a lot of citizen participation? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, but you had some real doozies, too. <laughs> a couple of them. <laughs> I'll tell you one funny thing. This is really, are we going to have uh -huh. time for oh, all yeah, that joke? Got, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll tell you one funny story there. Uh, uh, they used to keep the taverns open till 2 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. No, wait a minute. 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock in the morning on New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> one time, and I always, I started the, I always started the, um, our meetings with prayer. I thought well, they do it at the legislature, they do it in Congress, why not start at the writs of government? Mm -hmm. So I started the meeting with prayer and uh, I usually gave the prayer and sometimes I, well in fact I think every minister in town from every congregation at one time the Catholic priest mm -hmm. would come in just long enough to give the prayer, they'd be, they were very cooperative, but yeah. if they, no one, if I couldn't get anyone or if they didn't come, why then I did it myself. Mm -hmm. Well, this particular day, and then when any, whenever we had guests, uh, I always asked them if there was anything they wanted to bring up before city uh, commission because I felt there's no point in them sitting through all these mm. routine things unless sure. they wanted to. Sure. Well, anyway, this one day a man came in and I didn't know him, but I asked him if he would have had anything that he wanted to bring up before the commission. And he stood up and he said, <coughs> <coughs> Well, <clears throat> and then he did that again, cleared his throat about four times, and he says, well, actually not, uh, uh, Mrs. Smith, I'm just here as a visitor. And I said, well, glad, I'm glad you're here, and you do come again. Well, then his wife told a very dear friend of mine that he had rehearsed his speech in front of her, uh -huh. and what he had planned on doing is coming to see if they could extend the tavern um, uh, hour from one o'clock till two in the mm -hmm. morning. Mm -hmm. But when he heard, when I got up and started the meeting with prayer, he said, I didn't dare <laughs> ask her to do that. <laughs> I think that's funny. <laughs> anyway, the taverns <coughs> closed at one o'clock the whole seven years I was mayor. <laughs> I love it. That's but I, I laughed about that, but I laughed the way he <clears throat> cleared his throat several times. He just wasn't quite sure what to do. Uh, discretion oh, is the better of part of valor, right? Eh? <laughs> That's great. Well, yep. I wouldn't have extended it. I mean, I would still would have turned it down, but I mean, it's, I'm yeah. glad that, that our prayer scared him. <laughs> well, maybe it may, you know, it, it, it may have given him a little better sense. Uh, you've had a chance to, you're still acutely interested in the news, and I know that uh, you, uh, you are very aware of what's going on. What would your this uh, quick appraisal be of the difference between the commission system and the consul system? How do you? That's you know, a touchy question well, to ask is. me, uh, Joe. I served under the commission form of government, and the reason I served seven years, people mm -hmm. have asked me why seven years. Well, at that time, the commissioners were, uh, and the mayor was elected for three years, mm -hmm. three-year term. Mm -hmm. And then during, after, before my second term, the legislature changed it to a four-year term. Mm -hmm. That's how I happened to serve seven years. And I opposed the council uh, form of government. And uh, I can't say that I'm happy with it now. Mm -hmm. Now, the present council, I haven't had too much to do with them, and I think they're doing a, a mm -hmm. fine job. The only thing is, under the commission form of government, one knew exactly where to go. The, the mayor had the sanitation department, the police department, the fire department, so forth. And then the public works, you know what that would be, and the finance commissioner was a finance commissioner. Whereas now, uh, with and there's seven members, you don't know exactly who, and, and then they're all employed right. someplace or other. Yeah. Um, where do you go? I don't know. A lot of people are happy. Apparently, the majority were happy with it because it was voted in. Yeah. But I, I hear a lot of comments where people prefer the commission form of government. So, if you were to assess it, uh, simply the uh, re line of re direct line of responsibility to uh, and accountability. Right. It's a little clearer. With I think much more clear. Yeah. 
-hmm. under the commission department. Mm -hmm. Now, the council members won't agree with that. Well, some <laughs> might, some might not. You never know. But uh, no, it's interesting. You were a pioneer of sorts, too. There weren't very many women mayors back in the, in the early 50s. No, I was uh, one of 19 women in the United States, mm -hmm. the woman mayor, and the only woman mayor of a capital city when I was elected. Mm -hmm. So you must have had a bit of attention. Uh, was, it, was it difficult? Being a woman and uh, in that position back then? Well, you know, someone else asked me, or maybe you asked me that question. Someone else asked me that question. But mm -hmm. you know, Joe, uh, I never thought about the fact that I was a woman. Mm -hmm. I was mayor, period. Mm -hmm. What difference does it make, you know? Yeah. And, and, and I just never gave that any thought. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So that, uh, about you had your own duties. agenda and, right. and you had things to do. And you did a lot of them. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, you were also very active in other things during that time. Um, you also greeted a lot of conventions. <laughs> you know, that makes me laugh, especially the first one. Yes, I greeted many conventions. The bankers from Canada were, were, had a convention here one time, along with our, sta uh, uh, our own nation's bankers. But um, my first con uh, greeting was to the Business and Professional Women's, their mm -hmm. state convention was held here in Olympia. And of course, at that particular time, as you know, um, you're younger, you probably don't know, but at that time, women weren't exactly approved mm -hmm. in many positions. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a man, it's still a man's world. Sure. And I like it that way. But uh, anyway, I was so determined that I was going to prove to these business and professional women that a woman can do this, and I was going to do a good job. And I happened to run across a story where I'd heard a story before then, and I, I told that story. May I tell it? Sure, you bet. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, it's a story about a farmer. I, I was just trying to impress upon them or show them what a woman can do. Anyway, there was a farmer who lived on a farm through which a river ran, and that river overflowed its banks quite often. Well, this farmer lived with his son and daughter and uh, daughter-in-law. And uh, they were going to go to town to do their marketing. They went to town about once a month. So they laid out all their town clothes to be all dressed to go to town. And the next morning they wakened and the river had overflown its banks and they couldn't go any place. They couldn't even feed the stock. Well, anyway, the husband of this lady sat there and at the window watching this tide, or I mean, watching the current, the river going mm -hmm. down. And he uh, noticed something out there, and he was puzzled by it. So he called his wife, and he said, Mary, I want you to come here and watch something. And so she said, he says, see that object out there going down with the current? And she said, yes. Well, he says, watch it. It goes down so far, and it comes up so far. And it goes down so far, and up so far. He says, just watch that for a while. And he said, I've never seen anything come up with a current. It always goes down with a current. Well, Mary watched for a little while, and pretty soon she said, Oh, I know what that is. That's Father. He said last night he was going to mow the lawn come hell or high water. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the way I compared to what kind of a job I was going to do. <laughs> yeah. I was going to do a, a job come hell or high water. There you go, and you did it, too. Good for you. Well, yeah, I won't say it. <laughs> now, you used to... Uh used to go around to the churches and give, give talks, too, a lot. Yes. I gave the Sunday, Sunday, Sunday morning message in various churches around the state. Mm -hmm. I was asked back to Yakima First Christian three different times. Oh, is that right? And uh, preached my own church one Sunday morning. And uh, That must be fun. It was fun. I enjoyed that yeah. very, very much. Yeah. And you're still an elder there, or elder emeritus? Well, I'm an elder emeritus now. I've been a deaconess, and I've served on the church board, and an elder, now I'm an elder emeritus. Oh. My granddaughter was down last Sunday, and she says, we're talking about this, and she says, what's an elder emeritus, Nana? I said, it's a has-been. <laughs> <laughs> I said, it's when they retire you and call on you only when they need someone. <laughs> you also had built a bridge, or you started a bridge during your administration uh, over the Fifth Street Bridge? Or did you have the plans for that? Oh, the Fifth Street. Um, or was that? Uh, that was the, uh, uh, there was only one bridge 
at that time, that's a 4th Street right. Bridge. Mm -hmm. And we made plan under, during my administration, we made the plans for the 5th Street Bridge, okay. yes. And then that was built uh, a short while after? Uh, I don't remember the year that that was completed, uh, yeah. Joe, uh, but all the plans and, yeah. and everything were made during my administration. That's a all complex undertaking. Oh, yes. Yeah. Clarence Shane, as I say, was a marvelous engineer and a wonderful public works commissioner. The yeah. Grand Boulevard that, that sweeps around Capitol Lake now, was, was that, when was that put in? Now that's state, so I don't uh, know, Joe. That's beautiful. Huh? Yes, it is, but I, I don't know when that was put in. With all the cherry trees. And oh, those cherry trees. I own one of those. Oh, is that uh, right? Jimmy Drees, who used to have Drees uh, here in Olympia, mm -hmm. uh, whether it was his idea or what, but anyway, he went around asking everybody to buy a tree. Oh. And so uh, many of us bought a tr cherry tree, and that's how the cherry trees happen to be planted around oh. the area. That's good. That's and good. Uh, the, uh, the bridge is a topic, hot topic again. It's, it's, it's been stated we need another bridge there, or a bigger bridge, or a wider bridge. Well, right? it was a terrific bottleneck because like, people come down from Harrison. Now, I live up on, uh, on the west side there, at, up on the point, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, going, taking the Fifth Street Bridge there, you have to be very, very careful because the people come down that Harrison Street, hell, you, mm -hmm. if they all went the speed limit, there'd be no problem. Right. But they don't, and you don't know whether they're coming down that this bridge 30 miles an hour or 50, and some of them go because time and time again at the mm -hmm. bottom of that hill, you'll find broken glass. Oh, yeah. yeah. That it's, happens uh, more often than we like to say. Yeah, I think, I think that we have a real problem there from what yes, I can see. Yes, I agree with you. And uh, the problem is downtown, they keep studying and studying. We're going to have a parking garage here, and we're going to have a parking garage there. But uh, it seems to me that traffic flow is uh, part of the problem and we need to... Well, there's more people. Thurston County Olympia has grown. More people, more cars. And the day of everybody having one car, that's long past. <laughs> you'll find that as your children get older. You'll, right. you'll be I'll, buying more cars. All I have to do is look at the price of them. And I, I, know. I understand that. Uh, well, you also have a letter buried up at the Capitol grounds. Yes, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I can't think I can't think of the name of the other citizens, but I was asked to write a letter, and it's buried between the Temple of Justice and the legislative building, uh -huh. somewhere in a capsule. And that's to be uh, dug up or whatever. Honored, when the honors. Uh, uh, and honored, that's a honored. good word. I knew I shouldn't say it's <laughs> not gonna be unveiled or unburied or whatever, but honored uh, in the year 2000. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And at the time when I wrote that letter, which is a good many years ago, I thought, well, I'll never live to see that. When I stopped thinking, that's only 11 years. So I'm hoping I live to see that. You bet. And I'll be right I have, with you. I want to see what you wrote. Great. I <laughs> want to see what I, you know, I don't have a copy of that letter. I don't think we were supposed to keep a, a oh. copy. Now, who the other people were who, who wrote the letter, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Eldon Marshall might know. I meant to ask Eldon, and I just yeah. neglected to. You know, since since we talked, there were other things that uh, that that happened not during your reign as mayor, but, uh, but pri uh, prior to that, that I've heard about, uh, one, that uh, you're an accomplished thespian, that uh, the Olympia Little Theater, uh, not only did you, you were in there a couple of times, but you got some pretty good reviews. Uh, I played in the first two plays of Olympia's Little Theater. Uh -huh. uh, one was called Suppressed Desire. My granddaughter got quite a kick out of the name of that. <laughs> And the other was One Fine Day. Mm -hmm. I played with Helen Christopher in the first play and a Mrs. Charles Peters in the second play. And at that time, we didn't have the lovely little theater that Olympia Little Theater right. has today. We uh, did it in the, in the basement of the old Governor Hotel. Mm -hmm. And we had to walk through halls and step on boards that mm -hmm. it's a wonder we didn't do more tripping. Right. But that was a lot of fun, the first two plays of Olympia Theater. So the old, uh, the old saying in the theater, break a leg, took on a new meaning, huh? <laughs> I never thought of that. That must have been fun. That I was, uh, that they tore that hotel down and yes. rebuilt the new governor house on that site. Right. So it was the same. The very same place. Yeah. Was it a nice hotel, the old one? Uh, I think so, yes. Yeah. I liked it very was it, much. It was, was it brick? Uh, did it match it the brick, Alex next to it? Just like the Hotel Olympia and very similar. Yeah, that's, it's a shame that some of those things are gone. Huh? 
And you also sang on the debut of KGY, wasn't it? Yes, the first night KGY went on the air was uh, broadcast from St. Martin's College. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I can't recall how I ever got there or why I went there, but I didn't sing the solo, believe me, because <laughs> I don't have that kind of a voice, but I sang with a group of young people, and Father Sebastian was the one who... Um, Sebastian Ruth, right? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, that was the first two. From, he must have been quite a guy. He was a wonderful person. Now, I happen to be Protestant, but I have some very dear Catholic friends, and, mm -hmm. and Father Sebastian was one of them. He yeah. was a grand person. He must have been a man of, uh, of great intellect and uh, uh, a very inquisitive mind. Well, yes, from what you I can say that. Yeah. Yes, you Always can say that. About things, putting things together, had his radio shack. And, yeah. Big sense of, uh, sense of humor. Oh. Very much so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, you uh, also were involved in, with some of the service clubs, at least with the Kiwanis. And, uh, uh, yes, the Kiwanis Club. Uh, my husband was the past president of Kiwanis Club. I remember one time we were at the, uh, uh, they were having a party for the wives at, in the jade room of the Hotel Olympia. And uh, I stood there at the door with my husband and uh, another gentleman and um, Howard Bitch, he was with the Sunset Life Company at that time. He's gone now. But uh, I, I noticed that as the men came in, it was, hi, Charlie, hi, John, hi, David. Mm -hmm. And the women would come in, well, hello, Mrs. Smith, mm -hmm. hello, Mrs. Jones. And I made the remark, my, I wish the women, Kiwanis women, would know one another like the men do. Mm -hmm. And this Howard Bench said, well, Amanda, why don't you organize a Kiwanis Ladies Club? And I said, uh, my son was, I think, two years old at the time. And I said, I'm too busy. I said, I have time. I said, call me when my son goes to school. And I don't know what Howard did, whether he made a note up here or whether he wrote it someplace, but the day my son started the first uh -huh. grade, Howard Bench called me and says, Amanda, do you remember your promise? Uh -huh. <laughs> and I laughed. So I called several of the Kiwanis ladies, and we had a no-host lunch at the Hotel Olympian and we organized the club right then and there. And then they asked me to be their first president. That's 45 years ago. Hmm. And then last year I was their president again. Oh yeah, isn't that great, huh? 45 years later. Huh. And then you were active, of course, in uh, Terry's uh, activities, PTA and Scouts. Yes, PTA, music lessons, Scouts. Uh, well, hey, the music lessons are doing well. He's got, uh, you gave me one of his albums, his oh. uh, great voice. Well, he's gone to Nashville a couple of times. He made a Western uh, tape, and then he made, uh, I've been, I was after him for two years to make a tape of my 10 favorite hymns. Mm. And he completed that just before Christmas last year, mm. and I love that. In fact, today, he and my grandson are both on their way to Nashville to make a, an album. Oh, good luck, huh? <laughs> good luck. Isn't this, is, this isn't his business now. This is, he's credit consultant with a big attorney firm in, in Seattle, but. Mm -hmm. uh, but he, this is a hobby with him. He plays five different instruments, yeah. and he loves to, but he never did very much with singing, never had a singing lesson in his life that I know of, hmm. but he plays the piano. Beautiful voice, you shared that one tape, and I just love it. Well, I'll share the album with him Good. when he gets back. He's gonna make an album. Good, mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to it. You know, we've been talking a, a lot about things that you did. You also are still a dreamer. Let's talk a few, about a few of the things uh, you would like to see happen, some of your dreams. You mean Things you for like Olympia? Yes. Well, I know one thing I hope will not happen, and I do hope the Planning Commission will do something about high rises. There's a high rise on Fifth Avenue, mm -hmm. and I hope I'm not stepping on anyone's toes because I wouldn't hurt anyone intentionally for anything in the world, but this is what I feel inside. Uh, that high rise there on, on um, Fifth Avenue going mm -hmm. west, uh, when that was, when that, when that, before that was built, you could stand up at the Capitol at the back of the Temple of Justice, for instance, and see way down mm. that beautiful mm. view of the water, the sound, mm. beautiful. Well, now you stand up there and when you look at a big blank high rise. And not only that, mm. I don't know who the members of the Planning Commission were or who did this, but they allowed that building to be built. Mm -hmm. And then all along the lake where I had a dream of having park benches and green grass for the 
mm -hmm. citizens of Olympia and everyone tourists, mm -hmm. they have a parking lot. And that cement parking lot was built primarily uh, for the residents, I uh, mean the uh, oh, oh, tenants right. of yeah. that high rise. And to use that lake front that way is a, and I certainly, one of my big dreams is that no more high rises in Olympia. Mm. We have a lot of land there. yet That's places to go. The building you're, you're referring to is Capitol Center, which is uh, immediately to the west, I think, of the Elks. It's the west, but it's, it's right down uh, between the Capitol Lake and Bud Inlet there. Yes, Yeah, right. it's in the wrong place. Oh, it's a definitely Absolutely. in the wrong place. It, it's, it's just a shame in that, like, ruining that lakefront property with a parking lot. I, I don't know, we're going to have a, our country's going to be a slab of cement someday. Well, not if we're lucky, not if we, not if we work and, and, uh, and see what are some of your other dreams. Well, another thing, and uh, I don't know whether who at the State House are not going to like me for this, but I don't like the state buildings they're building around lately. Mm -hmm. um, the the uh, East Campus, and I was here when that was started, mm -hmm. and it's a beautiful campus, and mm -hmm. the buildings are beautiful. Mm -hmm. Then they have the the uh, I mean the I mean the West Campus, mm -hmm. the west west of Capitol Way. Mm -hmm. Well, now they have the East Campus mm -hmm. going that way. The buildings are not too bad, but they don't compare with these. To me, I'd like to see all the buildings mm -hmm. uniform, yeah. beautiful. Well, that, that too isn't too bad. The, the mm -hmm. grounds are nothing compared to the West Campus, however. But now, uh, do you remember the old J.C. Petty building mm -hmm. on no. Legion Way in Capitol? Yeah. Well, have you, have you noted the building that's there oh, now? It's, uh, it's, it's a, a desecration. A I don't know why. Now there again, I don't know whether to blame the Planning Commission for allowing that. Somebody had to allow that. Yeah, yeah. But they should have kept the buildings. This is the capital city of the yeah. state of Washington. And they should have kept the buildings more or less. A little stately. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there are a couple of things, Amanda. We have just a couple of minutes left. I don't want to forget one, one thing, and that was the renaming of one of our streets, uh, part of 7th Avenue, I believe. I'm proud of that. I don't remember exactly when that was done, but years after, I'm glad they did it while I'm still alive. <laughs> but uh, about five years ago, four or five years ago, mm -hmm. um, they named Seventh uh, Avenue Amanda Smith Way. Mm -hmm. and that's right on the corner of Seventh and Capitol Way. Isn't that great? That was a great day that day. Um, uh, Dave Scrabstead was um, mm -hmm. the mayor mm -hmm. at that time. Of course, that was the council form of government. Yeah. And he sent police escort up the ride downtown, and that yeah, nice. it, it was really. A, and another I thing, think, I, may I interrupt sure, you? Just you I don't know to whom to give credit. Mm -hmm. I think it was Eldon Marshall who started that, but I'm not sure, and Eldon would never admit it. Mm, no, nice. I'm sorry. I was going to say, I know there's one other thing that you're proud of, and that was when the Daily Olympian very recently uh, named you as one of the twelve who counted in this in this town's history. Yeah, that was a magazine section. I'm proud of that, that too, and I want to thank. The Daily Olympian for that. Well, I guess we could call this uh, this chapter of our story of Olympia the Amanda Smith Way, a woman who was concerned and cared and had the courage to act. And you did a lot for this town, and you've been a wonderful guest on our story of Olympia. Joe, I want to thank you very, very much. But before closing, may I also thank my supporters and all the people of Olympia who supported me. I could never have done all these things by myself. You know that. I might have started many of the things, but the people supported it and yeah. kept it going. It's been wonderful having you here. Do I have time for a toast? You bet. <laughs> I'd like to. I'd like to thank Carol Burns too and her staff, and to each of you and you, Joe, and anyone listening, and my supporters. I would like to propose a toast. I wish you health. I wish you well. I wish you golden score. I wish for each of you heaven when you die. What, oh what could I wish you more? <laughs> God right. love you. Thank you very much, Amanda. And thank you for being part of our story of Olympia. I'm Joe Willing, your host. We'll see you soon.
The story of Olympia. It's a story about a place known for many things. It's the village once promoted as the Pearl of the Puget Sound. It's the town that oysters and water made famous. It's the capital city of Washington State. But more than anything else, Olympia is a place people made great. So join us, won't you, in our stories of old Olympia. It's a tribute to our town's quiet heroes, the workers and the dreamers, the pioneers and the builders. They're all part of our story. They're all home folk. And while they don't always make headlines, they do make cities, and our city's a better place because of them. Welcome, I'm Joe Willing, your host for the story of Olympia. In this chapter, we focus on the major industry of Olympia, one that's been dubbed by Olympia historian Gordon Newell as an industry of rogues, buffoons, and statesmen. That's right, politics is our subject. Olympia was formed as a town in 1850. It incorporated as a town in 1859, and politics began with the first civic election on April 4th of 1859, at which time Joseph Cunningham was elected the first president of Olympia's town trustees. That form of government persisted until 1873, at which time Olympia reincorporated as a city under a consul form of government. The first mayor elected in 1874 was I.C. Ellis. Olympia changed its representative form of government to one of a commission in 1929. And its first mayor under the commission form of government was George Mills. That form of government lasted until 1982 when Olympia readopted a consul form of government and Dave Scramstad served as the first mayor under the reinstituted consul form of government. Of course, politics goes beyond just the cityscape in Olympia. We're the seat of county government and we're the seat of state government. And to help us look at some of the politicians and some of the politics of days gone by, we have Dan McCon, who has been in Olympia since 1911 when he was born here. Dan was a Olympia city commissioner from 1949 to 1955. He began work in Olympia in 1930 with Mills and Mills, although I'm sure he worked before then, but he began with Mills and Mills in 1930. And 30 years later, you bought the shop and owned it for 20 years until you sold it in 1980. Dan is what we would call, in today's parlance, a civic activist. In days gone by, Dan would have been just called a plain good citizen. Also with us in this chapter is Jack Taylor. Jack comes from King County. He was a King County commissioner from 1934 to 1940, and was then elected state land commissioner in 1940. He came to Olympia in 1941 for a temporary stay that's lasted to this day. Jack was appointed the first director of the State Pollution Control Board back in the 40s by Governor Mon Walgren. He served also as the executive secretary and deputy uh, commissioner of the Utilities and Transportation Committee. In 1965, he joined Bob O'Brien as assistant state treasurer until retirement in 1977. Since 77, he's been active as uh, a gubernatorial appointee to the Retired Public Employees Commission or Oversight Board. Welcome, gentlemen. It's a pleasure to have you here. Now, 
Dan, I want to start with you. I know when you were in the city commission that you had some, some fun with our one-way street grid, which, uh, which you helped bring in. That's right. When was that? That was in about uh, 1950. It caused quite a, quite a furor at quite the time. Quite a furor. But the people, when they were here at that time, knew that the main Pacific Highway went right through the center of Olympia. It came from the south down Main Street, or now known as Capitol Way, turned east on 4th and went towards Tacoma. Every car that came up the Pacific Coast came through Olympia, which was fine. But then we put the traffic lights in and we found out at the peak traffic periods we did not have storage enough behind the lights to handle the traffic. And so from about 4.30 to 5.30 or 6 o'clock in the evening, all the lights had to be turned off, traffic lights, and policemen put on each corner to hand direct the traffic. That, of course, was not good. So the city of Olympia went to the highway department and they laid out the only alternative that they could possibly come up with called one-way streets, suggesting that we go easterly direction on 4th, come down in a westerly direction on State Avenue. And while that alleviated the big traffic fall up in the city of Olympia, which of course has now been eased by the new freeway, mm -hmm. it uh, made a lot of people unhappy. Those people in business downtown that uh, for some reason or other their business was not prospering as it should, there was only one answer, one-way traffic did it. <laughs> if uh, their business picked up, they didn't mention it. And so that was one of the things that made us quite popular as city employees, in, um, officials. Those who you please aren't always those who uh, speak to you about it then. Yes. <laughs> what were some of the other issues you dealt with? Well, that? at that time, uh, we were getting our water from, from uh, uh, Moxie Creek, which uh, is right where the new freeway goes through Olympia. And they were artesian wells. And they still are artesian wells up there. But every time there was an earthquake, the the pipes of the artesian wells would shear off about 100 feet or so below the ground. They'd all have to be redrilled. And so it, a big effort was made and we put in at McAllister Springs a water system that assures Olympia with more water than we she will ever need. Mm -hmm. And uh, naturally the water rates had to go up. Somebody had to pay for it. And then of course uh, ecology and that sort of thing come along and uh, for years people dump their sewage on their neighbor's lot or let it drain, trickle down through the bay in pipes. No effort was made to take care of sewage mm -hmm. and so it was decided by the state and other officials that cities would put in uh, sewer plants, which we did. Now that cost uh, quite a few million dollars. Somebody had to pay for that. And so that was one of the utilities tacked onto the city bill that you get every month. So a lot of people said, no way, we're not going to pay for sewerage. We never have, never will. But there was one little sticker about it. We tacked the sewer bill onto the water bill. Uh, no pay sewer, no water. And that made us a few more people that didn't like us. And so it, uh, it's quite a challenge to be on the city commission. Everybody should be one someday. Dan, was uh, Little Hollywood uh, still in? Well, Little Hollywood had just been taken out. Down on uh, uh, the upper lake where uh, the old swimming pool is now, mm -hmm. there were about 100 or so float houses on logs. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was, of course, in the early 30s, that was called Little Hollywood. Uh, people didn't know where to go, so they, they got a few logs together, put them to float, anchored him in the bay up there in the headwaters of Bud Inlet, and they called it Little Hollywood. Uh, but the mayor, before I came in, named Truman Trullinger, mm -hmm. Truman and his group finally got rid of all the, the shacks on Little Hollywood, which cleaned that area up. 
That must have been a sewage problem, thinking about. Oh, yes, but uh, we're worried in those days. Uh -huh. That was before our ecological awareness. Us kids swam in the bay right up close, dived off the end of the sewer pipes. We didn't die. We prospered. I was always overweight. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> Things keep changing, and they're still the same. We're still building sewer plants and tacking right. it onto the water bill. Right. <laughs> Jack, when you came here in 1940, 1941, it certainly must have been a bit different from uh, the way it is today up there on the hill. Well, very definitely, Joe. Uh, before we go any farther, when you refer to politics, that isn't a dirty word, you know. Uh -huh. As I remember, Webster's Dictionary defines it as a science of government. And uh, I think maybe uh, Dan and I might refer to some sidelights of interest, uh -huh. which wouldn't be the science of government, but uh, in principle, this is what we're here for, to talk about the science of government, the development of Olympia, as a result of it being the capital city. Uh -huh. Yes, it was a, a great joy to come down here, and when I first come down, I planned to be here for four years because I was elected to a four-year term. Uh -huh. but. I was so impressed with the Olympia area, the people, that uh, I decided to stay. And I've traveled in many, many places in the world. And there isn't anything that I'd traded for mm -hmm. that I've seen. Upon taking office as land commissioner, the benefit of a business background before entering public life as president of the Price Right Retail Markets an advisory committee of the Puget Sound Quality Stores, which is the Associated Grocers, I found that a great advantage in entering the statewide picture as an elected official. Mm -hmm. Because it involved the appraisal of billions of dollars in uh, school timber that would go into the various school funds, and as a result of this business background, it proved to be very, very beneficial in the management. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, as land commissioner, I served on the capital committee, state capital committee, which composed at that time of the governor, the auditor, and the land commissioner. Governor Langley was the governor, Cliff Gill was the auditor. Mm -hmm. And we got into many projects and many problems as it referred to the capital city, which is Olympia. Mm -hmm. And I believe that we did a lot to preserve the idea that this is a capital city. Mm -hmm. I recall, Joe, uh, one time it was brought to our attention that there was a trend on the part of state government to move some of the main offices out of here into the city of Seattle. Mm -hmm. We got a hold of then Attorney General Smith Troy, I think you'll all remember him, an outstanding attorney. Had him check into what was going on. He brought up a test case that was decided by the Supreme Court that this was illegal and against the Constitution. This saved Olympia and preserved it as the capital as we see it today, in my opinion. Mm, that was a landmark case. That was a landmark case. In addition to that, uh, we outlined a program that hasn't worked out because it was our thought to try and keep the offices in a centralized area. It's mm -hmm. kind of spread out a little uh, all over the Tri-County and the area. One of the things that, uh, which is germane to what former Commissioner uh, Dan, my friend Dan, uh, one of the things that we did accomplish, which was a great project, and I think everyone in Olympia today, the younger element, should appreciate it, and I'm sure they do, and that is the establishment of the lake, the Capitol Lake. This was done when I was on the state land board. The dam was built, we separated the salt water from the fresh water, and you know the results. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's such things as that that I'm proud to have been a part of 
and had the cooperation of the nonpartisan mm -hmm. makeup of the land commission and so forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was definitely an improvement to the city. But Wonderful. Uh, I'm proud of it every time I drive by. It's <laughs> beautiful. It's beautiful. I go uh, down to the Alps and I look out over that lake and see the capital at night having dinner. I say, well, Taylor, you did something right. <laughs> what kind of man was uh, Governor Langley? Well, we, uh, we differed in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And of course, Langley was uh, mayor of the city of Seattle when I was King County Commissioner. Oh. And he didn't start out as a Republican. He was elected city councilman mm -hmm. on the then Cincinnati ticket. And uh, kept saying that he wasn't interested in running for governor. And all of a sudden he did. And uh, I might, a little actual sidelight. This is what I was saying to his breakthrough on the political arena. I got a call when I was in San Francisco attending a conference from a friend of mine and said, Jack, can you get back up here and uh, have a little conference with us? I said, well, what do you have in mind? He said, we want you to run for mayor of the city of Seattle. And I said, well, I said, gosh, I never given that any thought. And I, I doubt whether you can get to reservation because it was a war going on. So they, we've already made the reservation, but you have to go through Salt Lake City to get back. <laughs> well, I got back and we had the uh, conference of the leaders mm -hmm. and there was businessmen, there was labor, and a representative of the PI, which they said that they were ready to endorse me. And uh, I said, well, uh, I don't know whether I can beat Langley. Is he running for re-election? They said, uh, yes, he is, but we've taken a survey and you can beat him. Well, I said, thank you for the confidence. They said, uh, he's planning on running for governor and uh, we don't feel that we should re-elect a mayor that's gonna be spending his time campaigning statewide mm -hmm. for governor. And that's why we want you to run. You came from the business community and the King County Commissioner, and we feel that you're the man. Well, I said, let me think it over. So they said, well, you only got about two or three days to make up your mind. So I checked around and I decided that I would not run. I went into Art Langley's office and I said, well, Mr. Mayor, I know you've heard that uh, I was considering running for mayor. I want you to know that I'm not going to be a candidate against you, and I understand that you've assured the people that you will not run for mayor or for governor in 1940, that you will serve out your term. And he got up and he shook hands with me and he said, you're the only guy who can beat me, thank you a lot. Well, unfortunately, in a lot of cases in future years, he forgot that uh, little visit that I made and he changed his mind. And the way that it was gotten around when he said he was not going to run for governor, they went over to Eastern Washington, got petitions to draft him. Mm -hmm. So he was drafted and he I didn't see. run as yeah. such, you see. Okay. So it's kind of interesting to the sidelights to the political arena and it goes on and on and on. But he, he, was he a Democrat then who changed to Republican later? No, or he no? was actually, uh, Cincinnati's ticket was a nonpartisan, the council was nonpartisan. Okay. Just like Dan here when he was elected commissioner uh, in Olympia nonpartisan office. That's right, but, but Dan, you've been partisan your whole life. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you, who was the first mayor you remember? You were born in 1911. The first mayor I can remember? Oh, I'd, uh, that's quite a, quite a fur piece ago. <laughs> uh, this old man, uh, Mr. Johnson, had a grocery store downtown. Uh -huh. His son later became mayor of Tumwater. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, uh, man named Gamble, and Ian Steele. Oh, there's so many of them. Uh -huh. Who are some of, the, some of the mayors that really stand out in your memory? Uh, well, I think Truman Trollinger did a good job. He was there during uh, World War II when mm -hmm. it was tough. And uh, after Ike didn't serve anymore, I think Neil McKay did more to realign the police department. Mm -hmm. And we had a little trouble there. 
Uh, we were going through a phase in the police department where uh, policemen were the uh, uh, rough and tough type of uh, cop, you know, mm -hmm. into the higher educated uh, uh, academic type of, uh -huh. of chief. And there was a little squabble there, especially uh, uh, with a lady mayor just before Neil McKay. Who was Amanda Smith. That was Amanda Smith. Mm -hmm. And she's still living and still in good health. Mm -hmm. And uh, she still dreams politics, and she's quite a gal. I say that for self-defense because she lives <laughs> about four houses from me. I see. <laughs> but, you know, she's very nice. <laughs> and uh, then when they, of course, I, uh, it's a great, I'm a great booster of the commission form of government mm -hmm. because there are three men, and when you've got a problem, you go to the one that's responsible. Now, you want something down the air? Forget it. I see. I've tried. Uh, there's so many on the city council mm -hmm. that nobody's responsible anymore, in my mind. I see. Uh, you've got a problem. Before, you used to be able to go to the uh, head of the, uh, the finance department and arrange your bill. Now they have to refer it to a committee mm -hmm. who has to appoint another committee. Uh, I'm not used to that sort of thing, but I better get used to it. Well, Dan, I was 29. It changed over. So do you remember the former consul government which preceded the commission form? No, not too much. Okay. Because uh, that gets back and when, I, when I was just, I took uh, political jobs uh, for granted. I mean, we always had them, always will, and I didn't worry too much about them. Mm -hmm. I was worried about whether our football team was going to score or not or something like that. Right. Politics as such was for older people. Mm -hmm. When did you first get interested in it? I came back from World War II and uh, felt kind of didn't know anybody anymore. That was right. So elections came up and just for something to do, let people know I was back in town, uh, I ran for office. And they crossed me up and elected me. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it worked. After two terms, that was enough. <laughs> but uh, everybody should have a political job sometime in their life. Uh -huh. It changes your attitude and your ideas of politics. Broadens your perspective. Somebody's got to do it. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's one of our big problems in this country. The real good people that could handle it nicely uh, don't want to stick their neck out. The story of Olympia wouldn't be complete without talking about some of the more colorful characters we've had, both resident in our city and visiting it. Jack? As Commissioner of Lands, member of the Capital Committee, member of state government, you must have seen quite a few memorable people come through Olympia. Yes, Joe, that's uh, absolutely true. And, uh, you know, uh, no matter what walk of life you're in, uh, there's some uh, little sidelights of humor. And uh, that happens when you're meeting with uh, public officials, although we may disagree, you don't have to be disagreeable. So I've met some very outstanding uh, presidents, uh, members of the Senate and House. As a matter of fact, I served on the National Rivers and Harbors Congress, which is advisory to the Congress of the United States, appointed by the Congress of the United States. And this afforded me a great opportunity to meet many of our leaders. And this is where I first met Harry Truman when he was a United States Senator. And he was a great friend of uh, Senator Mon Walgren, who was, former, who was uh, later governor, former governor of the state. Harry Truman was one of the most outstanding gentlemen that I've ever met in my life. He at times wanted to relax, and including in, in his relaxing program would be a poker game with his friends. Uh -huh. But he never closed the door to the public. He never held it back that he loved to play poker and do a little gambling. And uh, as a result of that, when uh, Harry Truman was president, Mon Walgren was governor, he used to come and stay at the mansion a lot. And as a matter of fact, when I was director of the Pollution Control Commission, Harry Truman used my office because it was security from the standpoint of walking from the mansion in the back door to where my office was. And uh, we used to arrange a poker game once in a while, Joe. And, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, one night uh, they were over to my place, Mon Walgren and the president, 
and I'll never forget it. Uh, Harry Truman said, say, uh, Governor Mon, he says, uh, what time is it and what day? And the governor said, well, Mr. President, he said, it's 2 a.m. in the morning and it's Tuesday. And Harry Truman counted his chips and he says, I'm sorry, I can't stay longer than Friday. <laughs> but this is the type of fellow he was. Another incident I think that uh, I always get a great joy in referring to. We went out on the state fisheries boat fishing. And aboard was the officials of the state. And Senator Magnuson happened to be in town. So we all went out fishing. And on the way back, uh, Senator Magnuson said, well, he said, I think Harry'd like to organize a little uh, poker game, wouldn't you? He said, you, you organize it, Senator. So we sat down and uh, we were playing poker and uh, finally Magnuson looked up and he winked at me and he said, if you'll excuse me, he said, I have to go to the head. And I said, well, that's all right, Senator. I knew he was up to something. Pretty soon, the boat slowed down. And what Senator Magnuson did was go up and talk to the captain of the ship and said, look, the president's way ahead. Can you slow this down? We're ahead of schedule anyway. <laughs> and Senator Magnuson realized when the boat was slowed down, Joe, that uh, the security control and patrol around the boat would be very concerned. So the first thing that Sen Matt Senator Magnuson uh, did was go to the aft deck, wave the chief of the Secret Service and the president's uh, guards, and he leaned over and he said, Chief, he said, uh, there's nothing wrong with the boat. Don't be too concerned. The only thing that's wrong is that the president's ahead in the poker game and we're all trying to get even. <laughs> A little time to get <laughs> He was quite a guy, Harry. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. He was a great asset to this country. And great Senator leader. Magnuson. Senator Magnuson, outstanding. And Senator Magnuson and I were both elected to county office at the same time in 1934. He was elected uh, county prosecutor the same year I was elected King County Commissioner. And we almost flipped a coin to see who was going to run for Congress when right, right, right. he first ran for Congress. Outstanding. It's been history since. You were a member of the Capitol Committee in 49. Uh, That's right, Joe. That was the year of the earthquake. That is correct. That must have been... Well, I tell you, it was quite a uh, situation to go through from a financial standpoint. Uh, I got to throw in a little side light uh, here because uh, I'll never forget it. There was a certain gentleman in the state that every time I would go to a meeting, Eastern Washington or somewhere else, he would show. And he'd say, uh, Commissioner, uh, when are you going to give me that job? And I said, well, look, I've told you several times to give me a resume of your background, call up and make an appointment, and I'll be glad to sit down and talk with you at the proper place and time. Well, he said, I'll do that. So we finally got around to do it, and he come down, he had this appointment, and I'm sitting there interviewing in my office, the land office, and the earth shake stuff. And, of course, everybody was hiding under desks and so forth. And this gentleman that I was interviewing who had bugged me for several months for a job, got up and run out. It's the last time I've ever seen him. <laughs> but anyway, that was a shocking experience. And as a member of the state capital committee, we naturally were faced with uh, emergency problems. The dome was cracked. Uh, Many of the buildings were in bad shape. The insurance building was in bad shape. And it was just very fortunate that there wasn't a lot of people killed. 
If it hadn't have been that we have good structures up there, which is again an asset to the city of Olympia, that uh, would have resulted in hundreds of death. And fortunately, it came at a time when uh, there was uh, people not going in and out of the office like mm -hmm. the lunch break. It was a little before the lunch, as I recall it. It wasn't at 5 o'clock when everybody would be walking out. Mm -hmm. I was very fortunate as a result of it mm -hmm. that saved lives. But we were able to hire a qualified architect. We were able to get the emergency funds. And we did put the capital back in shape and the buildings that were damaged. Mm -hmm. Uh, the old Capitol building was uh, uh, really shook up because of the structure there was a little more dangerous than mm -hmm. the, uh, the main Capitol building. But uh, it's been recently restored again and has proven that that was built pretty solid when it stood, withstood that uh, terrific earthquake. I'd say so. Uh, Dan, not all the buildings in Olympia were quite so solid, I guess. You were on the Olympia City Commission at the time of the right. Great Earthquake. Yes. Uh, every building got shaken up quite a bit. Uh, if I remember right, there was only two deaths. One was a lady that died with a heart attack in the old Governor Hotel. Mm -hmm. And the other one was a fellow that got hit with a bunch of bricks from the big brick uh, smokestack at the old uh, Washington Veneer plant mm -hmm. down on Lower Capitol Way. Mm -hmm. The rest of that, uh, we were lucky. Mm -hmm. People seem to get out of that pretty well. Where were you when that happened? I was uh, at my place of business, but I immediately went down to the city hall, and uh, phones were ringing off the hook. But I'll give the city employees credit. When you're really under an emergency, most people will come through very mm -hmm. nicely. Mm -hmm. uh, all the police department showed up, all the people, uh, policemen on off-duty and reserve showed up. All the fire people showed up. All the employees of the street departments and stuff showed up because they backed up the police and fire department. Hmm. Uh, uh, the city bulldozers and the city trucks were hit the streets fast. And uh, I was great proud of the city. Yeah. It must have been a, a strain on the city's finances. At the it, uh, one of those things where your budget didn't count. You worried about that later. Mm -hmm. uh, but we had great personnel with the city. Uh, people that knew, remember Red Lynch, who was head of the fire department, a great character, and I say that with all due respect, mm -hmm. but he kept that fire department, there wasn't a bit of dust or dirt on any of those uh, trucks, top shape. Mm -hmm. The chief of police was uh, Leroy Kelly, who was what he wanted to be, was one of the best chiefs of police in the world. He knew everybody and knew his way around. Uh, uh, Major, Colonel, General Dome mm -hmm. was uh, the engineer for the city. Uh, even though he sometimes wasn't appointed engineer, he kind of took over the job anyway, he helping Charlie Williams out. And uh, the city trucks were out uh, mm -hmm. uh, capping the broken water mains. It was <laughs> a great relief. Lucky there was no fire with it. Not of any consequence. Did, uh, did that have any effect on uh, city buildings uh, from that It had an out? effect on the fact that uh, uh, our city inspection wasn't as quite as serious then as it is now. Mm -hmm. uh, Wally Turner was city inspector, and uh, if things were pretty close, well, what, who's worried, you know? Yeah. Right. Uh, but uh, it was hard to tell these people that your building had moved over two inches, and if you have another quake and it moves over another half an inch, the whole thing's coming down. So it had to be restored. Mm -hmm. Well, they had never gone through that before, and uh, it was kind of tough to have the young whippersnappers telling them that they had to spend a few thousand dollars on the building. So those are little things that come with the package. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, but everything worked out fine. Hmm. You know, this is, of course, before you were on the, on the commission, but Olympia had the reputation of being a pretty wide open town back in the uh, 20s. Well, all I know is what the older boys have told me. Uh -huh. I don't know. What are some of the things they told you? Well, uh, I know as a young chap, anything north of 4th Street was quite off limits. Uh -huh. Why, I've suspected, but don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, down around the city hall, 
and back on what would be 3rd Street and 2nd Street. Mm -hmm. uh, understand uh, there was some doubt on some structures along there. Mm -hmm. Ill repute, I think. Uh, all I know is what the older boys again told me. <laughs> Uh, that's why you find that uh, on the north side of 4th Street, we still have the Spar, which used to be uh, uh, Taylor's Place, mm -hmm. and the Capital City Cigar Store, and all those places mm -hmm. were not on the south side of 4th, but everything was on the, oh, on, the on the north side of 4th Street. And there was a dividing line there. Uh, kind of a, a separate thing that uh, very few prayer meetings were held uh, <laughs> uh, north of 4th Street. What I've heard uh, is that uh, Amanda Smith had uh, uh, a part in cleaning up the city, as it were. She says so. Uh -huh. Of course, there was gambling, and uh, I understand that uh, although uh, things were closed on uh, Sunday and it was impossible to buy any, um, any uh, beverages on Sunday, there was always a way in Olympia to do so. Again, allegedly, I've heard that, mm -hmm. yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Dan, who are some of the characters you remember from those days? Oh, well, characters, of course, can, can connote uh, many people and types of people. Uh -huh. They're good characters, bad characters, and lovable sure. characters. Uh, I think uh, probably after World War II or during World II, what uh, a lot of people had pointed out to them was a gentleman named Beachy. Mm -hmm. Beachy uh, came in with a Russian ship, World War II, and jump ship. Uh, he stayed here, worked as a longshoreman. He was a great, big, rough, tough guy, maybe six foot six, uh, 285 pounds. He got an accident and had his left arm squeezed off on a bite of the line. Didn't bother him too much. I uh, went down the street in the coldest weather with a, just a pair of pants and some slippers on. Could anybody else would have frozen to death. He was one character, and we've had a lot of them. Mm -hmm. uh, they were good people, bad people. Mm -hmm. Now, Ralph Swanson, the real estate man, was mayor of the... Yes, there's, see, at that time, there were two Ralph Swansons in town. Mm -hmm. There's still one, Ralph Swanson, an attorney. Right. Then another one, Ralph Swanson, real estate man. Mm -hmm. And he was mayor uh, back in the early 50s. The uh, fact is, uh, Amanda Smith became mayor after he. Oh, okay. And uh, Ralph was quite a guy. Mm -hmm. He started from nothing. Farm boy came up from Centralia. Mm -hmm. And uh, he did all right. But uh, it was interesting because people uh, had more of a, a way of getting around and expressing themselves, in my mind, than mm -hmm. they do now. Oh, is that right? Uh, they weren't inhibited by uh, things that you should or should not do. Mm -hmm. uh, they're interesting. Most of them uh, you could believe. If they said black was white, you believed it. So uh, it's you been a joy to joy, grow up in this town. There's I'll, a lot of people. I'll bet. And you worked at Mills and Mills in the same building for I started there in 1930, come back from school, was broke, so I thought I'd stay out a year or two to gets enough money to go back to school. Never did get enough to go back to school. <laughs> okay. But I stayed in the same job or the same building for 50 years. Mm -hmm. Finally wound up by owning the place then sold it out in 1960 to mm -hmm. young fellow that worked for me. So that way I know knew most of the people around town. Do you think that uh, it was smaller then? It was more it was My more first memory of Olympia was about five, 6,000. Now, uh, I don't know what the population is. Well, you have to include uh, the contiguous yeah, areas the, of Tumwater, the, Lacey, the, Tangle Wild, uh, and when you the, do, you're 120,000, give or take, uh -huh. which is a sizable Well, thing. we competed with the side of uh, Centralia and Hokium, and tried to stay a little bigger than Shelton. A little bigger than Shelton, huh? Was it more pleasant back then, do you think? Well, again, uh, more comfortable? Pleasanter is a uh, uh, become individual opinions. Mm -hmm. I uh, was always uh, in a hurry to grow up. Mm -hmm. uh, as I can look back on my life now, it was some of the better parts of my life was when I was in my teens. When you were hurrying to get out of them. Well, uh, you went to school, you took the streetcar, or you ran. Uh -huh. didn't, of course, didn't have wheels, just for bicycles. And we got along all right. 
I was too busy, interested in sports to worry much about girls. A great waste of life. <laughs> <laughs> I think. And golf. Uh, you're a noted historian of Olympia Country and golf. Oh, and golf, yes. Uh huh. And that's been a part of uh -huh. your life. To make the good golfers look good, they must be bad golfers to compare them with. I was one of the comparative people no, that they no, compared that, with. That is stretching the truth. <laughs> now, I've seen you golf and uh, you do quite well. Well, I, uh, I still got my membership, but I still got my card. Mm -hmm. The card still does not have side curtains and a heater in it, but uh, I still got it. And Dan, I still read the little history you wrote about the Olympia Country and Golf Club. Good. Which is fun. Jack, when you came here in 1941, the town was a bit smaller than it is today. Very definitely, Joe. It's hard to uh, realize the difference when you think back that many years. Mm -hmm. 40, almost so, 50 years now. Yeah, going on. It's kind of dating me, isn't it? <laughs> Lacey was a little different back then. Or? Oh, every community uh, which is now part of the Mass population was sure different, yes. State, Very different. State government has grown uh, considerably since. Terrific, then. and uh, this is uh, beneficial to the city and uh, the greater Olympia area has mm -hmm. been uh, a plus for them. And of course, the uh, state has grown in population, and uh, naturally, government uh, grows with it. Mm -hmm. No question about it, it's going to be that way in the future. But I think that we have to encourage the younger citizens of our great state to take an interest in the government life. Mm -hmm. I think that it's going to be necessary down the line as we see population growth to have dedicated public officials. And this is one thing that uh, when I travel throughout the state, uh, representing the uh, public employees retirees on the State Employees Insurance Board, which I'm running out now 12 years since I retired from active government, and I've contributed thousands of hours and the volunteer hours, time, plus many dollars, out-of-pocket expense. But there's one thing when I do travel and I talk with the younger group and uh, meet with them, I urge them to please take a good look at political science in your education because it's a must to make America Americanism. Mm -hmm. And it's to the younger people of this great nation of ours that what we're looking forward to preserving so we can ra wave that flag as good Americans. Well, you came here in a period when that was uh, truly threatened. In uh, 1941, 40, the world was coming apart. That's right. In, uh, right in December 7th, 1941, we were thrust into it in a very right. major way. And that's, uh, that's something that uh, some of us were a bit yes, younger. As, uh, as land commissioner, I became involved in that because uh, the British, for instance, were uh, building their airplanes out of spruce, and spruce is hard to come by. And uh, the uh, president of the United States in his office got a hold of me to see if we couldn't expedite and work out a program whereby we could release the spruce up in the uh, peninsula area and uh, the uh, Olympic Mountain. And we did. Another side light, this is kind of interesting, that uh, where you have disagreements, but you don't have to be disagreeable. Uh, the president's office contacted me when they were um, trying to acquire land in the Tri-Cities for the atomic bomb. And the state owned many acres of land over there. This was an emergency. And I said, yes, I will work out a package for the federal government. I took it to the land board, and unfortunately, we had a treasure auto case, with great respect to auto. He just tore me apart. 
for making the land available at a reasonable price without going to bid. And I said, look, Mr. Treasurer, as long as I'm land commissioner, in this country and the world in the state of emergency, in the war that we're in, and the President of the United States contacts me and asks me for my cooperation in making that land available in the Tri-Cities, I'm going to be in his side. Now, you can vote any way you want. Well, the land board passed it, and he voted against it. Later, he apologized. But those are some of the things you run up. And you run up against this business if you're on a board of directors of the business or whatever it may be, an advisory committee to a college or whatever it may be, you're going to have these differences of opinion. But you can have honest differences of opinion without being distasteful. Mm -hmm. That's what I've always advocated in government, and I think this is the way to walk. That's been some fascinating years, the 40s and then the 50s. I wouldn't trade them for anything, Joe. Yeah, it's just <laughs> fascinating. Now, Dan, you were, you were in the military in the war? Yes. Uh -huh. There were a lot of boys from Olympia. A lot of them went. Uh -huh. And I guess a lot didn't come back. That's for sure. But uh, you didn't have to apologize to anybody when you did come back. <laughs> yeah. And you can always keep that in mind. Well, Dan, you've been a great attribute to the city over the years. Thank you, Joe. And it's sure a pleasure for me to know you. And Jack, it's been a real pleasure to have you on our story of Olympia. Joe, I want to thank you for the invitation and uh, Charlie Curry, and especially the uh, community uh, television station and their staff. I think that uh, more programs like this uh, should be televised and present it to the public. I think it's a very constructive deal. There's sidelights where we can get some laughs, but there's some good points constructive to the building of America, making it stronger and stronger and get rid of the war and have peace in the world. Thank you very much. And thank you for being part of our story of Olympia too. This reminds me of old KGY of when it first started. Anybody that was breathing could be on the air. <laughs> <laughs>